Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Reno, Nevada. I'm Bill Edwards along with Dave Williams. We'll be down here on the sidelines, or at least Dave will, to tell you what's going on down here. I'll be providing color for Georgia Southern and also against uh, Nevada Reno this afternoon. And up in the booth to do the play-by-play -play for us, Chuck Dowdle, the sports director with WSB in Atlanta. And we've got the national anthem played by the Nevada Reno pep band right behind us. but certainly not outclassed. They come in here with a record of 11-2. and two. Nevada Reno, ranked number one in the country, is 13-0, and, oh, and uh, deservedly so ranked as the number one team. Tracy Hamm, the great quarterback for Georgia Southern, says you've got to play the best and beat the best to be the best. And that is the philosophy today. And the battle cry of one more time, for those of you who haven't followed Georgia Southern, they've never lost a playoff game, won the national championship last year. They're the defending national champions now. And can you guess who's coming out on the field at this point? It's Georgia Southern, and uh, they're coming out right behind us. The weather is beautiful compared to what we thought it was going to be. Dave, uh, there's a wind blowing, but we thought we might be in snow. We thought it might be 12 degrees. Bill, the weather is just absolutely gorgeous here. We, we were worried about the snow and all of this all week long. They were saying the temperature may be 7 degrees, but this looks like Statesboro weather. Uh, outstanding weather conditions, about 50 degrees or so. Slight breeze blowing, but not bad at all. So perfect conditions for football here today. You've heard about Mile High Stadium and uh, in Denver. Well, we're about that. We're about a mile and a quarter high here at Nevada, Reno, 7,500 feet above sea level. But Erg says he thinks all that. Erk Russell, the coach of Georgia Southern, he says that's all psychological. But these guys are ready to go. And uh, they're going to have to be to play a team like Nevada, Reno. Boy, they are tough. Uh, they've played, played uh, 13 games this year, won all of them. They can become the first team in the history of modern era, a modern era college football to win 15 games providing they win the national championship 15 games in one season so that's what kind of phenomenal team we're talking about and what kind of shot this Wolfpack team has incredible record but Georgia Southern has played well on the road they have played this is their eighth game on the road this year the only two teams they've lost to have been division one schools the University of Florida to open the season and East Carolina about the middle of the season and Chuck Dowdle you can take it away up there my man gentlemen thank you very much we're looking forward to a good one here at Mackey Stadium and we'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. We are back at Mackey Stadium. Chuck Dowd along with Bill Edwards, Dave Williams down on the sideline. Georgia Southern has won the toss and there you see the great bald eagle himself. Eric Russell, and he's getting his troops out on the field and ready to go. Bill, this ought to be a good one. This really should be, Chuck. Uh, it is one of the... Um one of the traits of Georgia Southern, as we were saying in the pregame, that they play very well on the road, and they've had to. This is their eighth road game this year. I'll tell you what, uh, they, they have an incredible record. When you look at Irk Russell's playoff record, 6-0, and oh, unbeaten in playoff competition. Phenomenal when you consider they only restarted the program five years ago as well. All right, deep. You've got Ricky Harris back there, along with Keith Jeter, Herman Barron. And Zendejas, Marty Zendejas out of Chino, California. He, of course, was a brother in the National Football League, but he'll kick it off with the Wolf Pack. And here it is Wolf Pack, two separate words. Unlike NC State, right? Exactly. And the crowd on its feet, we are really looking for a high-scoring affair. When you look at the way these two clubs have gotten here, Nevada, Reno, 27-7 over Idaho, 33-6 over Tennessee State, and, of course, Georgia Southern, 52-21 over North Carolina A&T, and then 55-31 last week over Nickel State. We are looking for a high-scoring affair. Who knows? We'll see. We're ready to go, though. And Zendejas will put it into play.
Rather short kick and going to go out of bounds. So they'll back him up five yards and try it again. That's uh, not what we were told to expect out of that gentleman. No, not really. And he's got the wind at his back right now, Chuck. Um, we didn't mention the zonies in the pregame. We may have to talk about them and the psychological factor they're going to present. Those are the people who sit in the end zone and try to make a lot of racket. They've been passed out uh, megaphones before the game, courtesy of McDonald's, I understand. I'm not sure they needed the megaphones. They sounded I'm, fairly loud when I, when I walked in today. I'll well, see if I get a quarter pounder with cheese again. <laughs> They'll back it up five yards to the 30, and Zendejas will have to kick it again. Talking with Irk Russell before the contest, and he made a good point. You know, he says, we, we ought to be seven up already just getting the break on the weather because we didn't know <laughs> what to expect when we got here. And it turns out the day is beautiful. I mean, crisp and clear. I'd say temperature is probably in the mid-40s. Not at all like what Arkansas State got last, last year when they came out here and were hit by a snowstorm. That was the quarterfinals, and they went on to advance past that and uh, lost to Furman in the semifinals. This team has never made it past the semifinals, Chuck. They have high hopes this year. They come into this game ranked number one. Very confident. Again, a short kick by Zendejas, and again, out of bounds. So Georgia <laughs> Southern will just move it up the field five yards at the time. We started off a game like this one time, and I uh, think we had to kick three times. They apparently have some fear of kicking deep to Ricky Harris. I can see why. Ricky's got good speed, a very explosive runner. He follows his blockers well. You give him any kind of an alley whatsoever, and Ricky is going to be gone for big yardage, if not gone all the way. Well, Zendejas, he'll back up five more yards. Now he'll be kicking from his own 25-yard line. So Georgia Southern now improving uh, field position by leaps and bounds <laughs> here without ever having to touch the football. And the truth of the matter is, when you start to look at when Georgia Southern plays on a short field, and by that I mean when they get the ball inside the 50, they are scoring like 75% of the time. When they get it to an opponent's 20-yard line, they have scored an incredible 97% of the time. In fact, they've had it inside the 20, I believe 58 times, 56 times they've scored, and of those 56 scores, 46 of those were touchdowns. Just an amazing offense, and they've got an excellent kicker in Tim Foley, uh, who you might see today. In fact, the, the field goal kickers could be the difference in this ball game, Chuck. And, and Foley didn't make the All-American team because uh, the offense was so good they kept scoring touchdowns. So for the third time, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and he hits that one, and Ricky Harris it. has got it back at the 10-yard line. Got a little room, breaks through, and gets it out to about the 35-yard line before he's finally snowed under there. James Witherspoon making the hit. And the Wolfpack goes on defense, and Tracy Ham and the Hambone offense takes the field. First and 10, Georgia, Georgia Southern, and we'll call it at the 36-yard line. So Southern goes on offense on its own 36-yard line with a first and 10. Here's your Eagles offense, and there you see it. Uh, bells are, and here's the Eagles defense, which we'll be getting to a little bit later on in the contest. But right now it's that offense and Tracy Ham. Right away, Ham scrambles out. Look at the moves. Puts it in the air, and he's got a receiver, and he can't hang on. He was trying to hit Gerald Harris, his fullback, but Harris just tried to turn it upfield a little bit quickly. He was pressured by Jeff Davis back there, but did a great move. That's typical of what you expect from Tracy Ham. Take another look at it. Notice, Tracy, how, how unusual um, he, he gets out of these situations. He's done this before on numerous occasions, Chuck, and uh, just Gerald just couldn't hold on to it. It's a little cold out there. Well, Looks like he turned up field just a bit soon, so yeah. second and ten. This time they give it right up the middle to Harris, and Harris pounds it up through there. Gets about four yards out to about the 40. Henry Rowling making the tackle. Rowling is there maybe their best defensive player. In fact, uh, he is the guy that they say to watch for throughout the afternoon. Here's the Eagles offense, Warnock, Cochran, Franklin, Ganey, and Stokes. And of course, Sean Ganey filling in for James Carter, who is not on this trip. Call it third down now and about six yards to go. Eagles with a conversion opportunity. Ham puts it up, he's got a receiver wide open is Monty Sharp, and Sharp gets it out of bounds, down deep in the Wolfpack territory at about the 39-yard line, they're gonna spot it. Joe Peterson finally tossed him out of bounds, ran him out, but still, a big pickup for Georgia Southern. Tracy going to one of his favorite receivers, Monty Sharp, who has very sure hands, Chuck, and he can take a shot, something fierce, and still hold on to that football. He's a very good man to have down there. 
So on third down, Southern converts, and here goes Georgia Southern's handball offense really making the move now. Hand off up the middle and sliding to the right goes Gerald Harris, and Harris pounds it down inside the 35-yard line, down to about the 34-yard line. Joe Peterson in on the stop again. Peterson getting a workout early. Harris a real workhorse on these drives. Um, you'll notice, Chuck, that he, uh, he gets the ball and he follows his blockers real well. He's also a very explosive runner. He can get past those guys and uh, get past big piles and, and make big yardage for us. Pick up about five yards and second down and five to go. Again, they go with Harris, and again, a good hole over the right side. Dennis Franklin and Fred Stokes doing a good job of opening up the right side, and Kent Donathan finally has to make the stop, but not before Gerald Harris gets it to a third and one situation down at the 31-yard line. So Nevada Reno's defense taking a pounding here in the early going. Now we start getting down into that territory, as we were discussing, Bill, where you... You start to say, well, Georgia Southern's offense uh, really puts points on the board here. That's right. And, there goes and again, Harris is hitting the backfield, but falls forward and gets the first down. Dean Hodges came firing through there and made the hit on him back at about the 32-yard line, but he staggered forward, and I believe he got the first down. They're going to take a good, hard look at it, but it's good. It's going to be close. I think they did. Uh, they're going to show it to you again, but uh, he is very close. Uh, they may be getting a bad spot out of it. They moved it back and call it fourth down and one just outside the 30-yard line. I thought he got it across that 30, Chuck. Well, he did not get the greatest of spots, that's for sure. But nevertheless, on fourth down, and with the offense moving the way it's moving, Irk Russell has decided to go for it. So here we have a big call early in the game, and right up the middle, keeping the football, is Tracy Ham, I believe, and Ham has the first down with plenty to spare, and so Georgia Southern's offense maintains control. Mike Lazovich and Kent Donathan teaming up to finally make the stop on hand, but not before he got a couple of yards and got the first down. Got a couple of defenders in the backfield right now. Wildman Carter, guy known as James Carter, Larry Boone. And of course, Harris is the lone setback, and this time they pitch it out to Ricky Harris, and Ricky Harris coming around and takes it to the left side and gets it down near the 20, down to about the 21-yard line. Ken Caleb, number 11, the free safety, along with Brian Kasky, strong safety for Nevada Reno, having to make the tackle. So Ricky Harris, and there's another look at it. Look at him pounding in there. 11.41 to play here in the first quarter, and the officials move that back to spot it, we call it second down, and about uh, three yards to go for the first down. see what Tracy Ham comes up with on a second down call. And again, they go back to Gerald Harris, and again, right up the middle. Dean Hodges making the stop, but I'll tell you, now you got to feel like Georgia Southern thinks they can move this football right up the gut on Nevada Reno because they've taken the ball there about five, five times in this drive. Once again, you see a lot of defensive players coming out on the field there, Chuck, and they do this when they get down to short yardage situations or they get down close to the goal line as they're going to have a little measurement here. And they do that to uh, open those holes for Gerald. Uh, they're just short, so this time it'll be third down and about a foot and a half, we'll call it. But again, now we're in that territory that we were discussing earlier where Georgia Southern has just dominated scoring. Once they get inside the 20, 97% of the time, they put points on the board. Got another interesting stat for you, too, that we'll get to when they get those points and if they get those points. Right now, that doesn't look like it'll be much of a problem. Third down, short yardage, and Ham's going to keep it. He's got a blocker out in front of him. He's got three defenders there, but he cuts it back inside and gets about five yards down inside the 15-yard line. They'll spot it just over the 15. So it'll be another first down for Georgia Southern, and the Eagles continue to move the football. I think you can watch the replay here, uh, Chuck, and notice how he may have cut just a little too soon, tripped over his own blocker there. Tell you what, you know, everybody talks about Tracy Ham and everybody talks about what a great athlete, but there you saw the cut, and he's the first player ever in college football history in any division to throw for 5,000 yards in his career, run for 3,000. You start to run out of superlatives when you talk about him. Here's the quarterback draw. He takes it right up the middle again and down inside the 10, down to about the 8-yard line. 
Donathan, the weak inside linebacker, had to come over and finally trip him up. The quarterback draw has been an extremely successful play for him, Chuck. As you watch it, Tracy just goes right up the middle. He drops back like he's going to pass, and they have to respect that. And then all of a sudden, here he comes through the middle, and he's got uh, usually has three, four, five yards. Bill, it's been my observation watching Georgia Southern in the past few years that most any play involving the name quarterback is pretty successful. For <laughs> Second down and five. Georgia Southern knocking on the door early. They give it to Gerald Harris again right at the heart of that Wolfpack defense, and Harris gets it down to about the five-yard line. In fact, that's exactly where they'll spot it. Watch it from the end zone. Now the official taking a timeout. He wants to take a look at it because it could be very close to a first down. Spinning right down to the five. Gerald is an extremely powerful runner. And we want to thank the folks in Swainsboro for sending him to us, too. <laughs> that's something else, too. It, it, when you start wondering why Irk Russell's program has been so successful in such a short period as they look at this measurement, and again, Georgia Southern has come up just inches short, but I don't think that's going to hinder him much here. A second down and very short yardage. In fact, uh, we'll call it maybe a foot, so I, basically it'd be a free play here for Tracy if he wants to throw one in the end zone. But when you start to look down that roster and you see how many Georgia players he has recruited and been able to keep at home, and that, that's a key to any program. When you're able to keep the, the local boys home and playing for you, that's, that's when you have a good program going. And they've done well. So third down and very short. And there's a mix-up on the snap, and now the whistle blows, and let's see what the call will be. I thought a flag might be tossed, but one was not thrown. Somebody, it looked like that defense moved awfully quickly. Dean Hodges is a guy who came over to make the stop and bl blew through there, and there you see the zonies. And those people are enthusiastic, I want to tell you. No, no flag on the play. It's going to be fourth down and about, what, three? Two and a half? Well, they give them the sack, so fourth down and three yards to go. So... With that in mind, here comes Tim Foley, and Foley, who has been extremely successful. 10 out of 11 this year in field goal attempts, and from short yardage, we'll call it a 29-yard effort. I'm sorry, 24-yard effort. No problem. And it is good. Three to nothing, Georgia Southern breaks on top, and we'll be back. Nevada Reno nothing I told you there was an interesting stat when Georgia Southern scores first how about this bill they are 16 and 0 over the past two years 24 and 1 over the past three years isn't that unbelievable they've got such a powerful offense they do move it very very well and so Georgia Southern now kicks off and this is a good kick very deep Number five, that's Kevin Claiborne on the return, and Claiborne gets it out to close to the 25-yard line, out over the 20, about the 23, 24. Whole host of special team members there for the Eagles swarm him under. One of the, fa one of the things that Eric Russell has worked on most in the last, I'd say, uh, half of the season, Chuck, and during the playoffs has been the special teams. The weakness of this team was the, uh, the kickoff squad. The defense has taken a lot of lumps this year, basically because uh, they have been working at times with a... 57 yard field or so and here you see that defense and a good one it is too. Hall, Boone, Allen, Eves, Porter, Matthews, Underwood, Durham, Aiken, Young and Brown. Eric Beaver is looking to the air to throw and the ball is batted down. Look like Flint Matthews. And number 34 Robert Underwood had his hands up there and that's the kind you know those kind of guys they're so surprised to see the football coming at them. He was trying to hit Scott Treaty. Scott Treaty is a great, great story for this club. He's a very quiet uh, receiver for them. He's uh, fourth on their all-time receiving list, but they say he's done it so quietly that uh, practically no one's noticed. Uh, All-conference, and uh, they really like him a lot. He's their tight end, number 46. Beavers, though, with two great running backs behind him. They call him the F Troop. We'll tell you a little bit more about that. And this time, Beavers whips it out in number 47. That's Tony Logan. He just kind of loses his footing and slips down, but still... Picks up about five yards. They call it a gain of six and spot it out at the 30. No Leaguer Beavers rolling out there. He threw a beautiful pass and um, he just slid down. Logan just uh, fell down on his knee and uh, Danny Durham was there to, co to cover. So that'll bring up a third down now and about four to go for the first down. This is a team that likes to keep it on the ground though, Chuck, despite the fact they've thrown the first two times. Well, there's good reason for that with Lucius Floyd and <laughs> Chavez Foger. And here's Beavers again. He's going to throw on third down. He's being chased. And down he goes. Down he goes. Number 58, Flint Matthews, chases him and sacks him. 
back at about the 21-yard line. So a big third down defensive play by Flint Matthews. Matthews, 6'1", 225 out of Lincolnton. He's got good speed for a big guy. So on fourth down, Brett Dales comes in to kick it away, and he's averaging 41 yards per kick. And you got, you got to kind of take that in perspective because the altitude will make a difference here. Uh, mm -hmm. Big a big difference, in fact. Deep for Southern is Tony Belzer. He's got the win with him, by the way. Dales gets it away, and up comes Belzer, and he's got it in a little bit of room and gets about three more yards out to the 47-yard line. James Witherspoon on the special teams up quickly to make the stop. But Georgia Southern now back on offense. The Eagles looking for more of those points, which, <laughs> which they have not had a hard time getting here in the playoffs. Let's be honest about it. 52 in one game, 55 in the other, 107 points in two games. Their average winning margin in those two games has been 27.5. There's Gerald Harris, and again, right up the middle of that Reno defense. Bill Bonsell and Mike Lazovich making the stop. But clearly now, wouldn't you think that Irk Russell has decided that the way to beat this team is go right at them, right up the middle? I believe so, Chuck. Uh, you know, they, the best way to beat Georgia Southern is to keep the ball away from their offense, something that uh, Nevada Reno has yet to... Uh, oh, by the way, we meant to say that it's Nevada. They want us to make sure they know that. They're very clear about that. It's Nevada yes. <laughs> to all who live within the state, they say, and Nevada to all outsiders. But uh, <laughs> they say it is definitely Nevada. Second down. Tracy, good protection, and he's going deep. He's got a receiver down there, and it's intercepted and dropped. Incomplete. Bernard Ellison momentarily had the interception. He was trying to hit Ricky Harris deep. Ellison could not hold on. Okay. We're going to see uh, probably that's, um, that's a pattern that, that Tracy runs very well, but he rarely, goes, he rarely goes to Ricky Harris in that situation. He's usually going to Tony Belzer, or he's uh, going to Monty Sharp in that situation. Took a very short drop, but had excellent protection. Let's go down to Dave Williams on the field. Chuck and Bill, the big key to that last defensive series for uh, Georgia Southern was that all of the uh, Nevada Reno deep men were covered. The Georgia Southern secondary did an outstanding job on that, and that that, uh, that gave us the chance to have the sack down there. And uh, great defensive play that time by the Eagles. Back up to you guys. Thank you very much, Dave. And as, uh, as you were talking there, Tracy Ham did pick up the first down. And again, that's why this gentleman is so dangerous as a Kodak All-American and, and just a great athlete. He's also been picked a quarterback the East West, uh, the East team in the East West Shrine game. Something a rare, very rare honor, Chuck. Out of High Springs, Florida, and I know the folks in High Springs extremely proud of Tracy Ham. First down for Georgia Southern. Again, Ham drops the throw, fires it. He's got a receiver, Belzer, and Belzer down at the 25-yard line. That'll be good for a 14-yard pickup and another Georgia Southern first down. Here you see Tracy rolling out to his left, threads that needle right to Belzer, who runs his patterns beautifully. Another first down for Southern, and Southern not having much trouble running the football or throwing the football here in the first quarter. We've got 6.13 to play, and Southern up top 3-0. And looking for more. First and 10. Tracy on the quarterback draw, breaks one tackle, almost broke another, and still gets a couple of yards. Henry Rowling finally uh, collared him, but just barely. I'll tell you, I thought he was going to come out of that one, too. I thought he was, too, uh, and that was a good play by uh, Rowling because had uh, Tracy broken that one, he had at least five more yards, Chuck. Might mention, too, the winner of this game goes to the Diamond Bowl, the NC2A 1AA championship game in Tacoma, Washington next week, and we'll play either Arkansas State or Eastern Kentucky. The last score we had, three minutes to go in the first half, and Arkansas State leading it 7-0. Tracy Ham keeps it, cuts inside. Oh, I tell you, he scares you holding that football up like that, but he gets it inside the 20 down to about the 19-yard line. Dean Hodges, number 74 for the Wolfpack. Makes the tackle. That's always frightening. Watch the way he's got this thing carried out there. He has to get that ball around one of the defenders and gets inside the 20-yard line, but that's always, that gives uh, the coaches gray hair, with the exception of Burke, of course. <laughs> well, yeah, with the noticeable exception of Burke. Yeah. You know, the great thing about uh, Tracy, you see a lot of a lot of uh, ball carriers carry the ball out, but he, he had to lift it up over that uh, defender that time. <laughs> third down now, another third down conversion opportunity for the Eagles at the 19 of the Wolfpack. 
Tracy says he's having a little bit of trouble hearing. That could have something to do with the megaphones down there with the zonies. It that might. is the area that, to which uh, Georgia Southern is headed. That very well could be, Chuck, because it did, well, really it didn't sound as loud as it did the last time they were down here. I don't know if he's just trying out to get a little extra time so he could get a play. One of the things through the years that you find is when the quarterback does that, it will generally encourage those folks to get just a little bit louder next time out. Yeah, that's the truth. And there you see those zonies. They are amazing. They call themselves that because they sit over there in the end zone, and they were the first ones here. I got a feeling they're the last ones to leave, too. Well, here it comes. Third and four. Tracy takes a snap, keeps the football. Runs the option, cuts inside, picks up the first down and another couple of yards down to about the 12-yard line. Great move by Tracy Ham. He's got, there's a sixth sense that he's got, Chuck. I, there's no way to explain it. You can't coach it. And here we go, as you see him rolling out to his left. He gets past one guy, cuts inside this one, and he gets the yardage that he needs before he's finally pulled down by Kent Donathan. They spotted back at the 13, but another Georgia Southern first down. And again, the Eagles threatening, knocking on the door. They're already up 3-0, looking for more here in the first quarter as the clock winds down, about four minutes to play. Ham again, right back up the middle, and he's going to score. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Tracy Ham, and there you see the great athletic ability. Here Took come the, the ball, megaphones. Step back. <laughs> Remember all those megaphones they were given? Well, here they are on the field. Right up the middle, Tracy Ham for the touchdown, and Georgia Southern now leads it 9-0. Here you go, Tracy cutting back inside. Watch him the way he just, he finds those holes. Where, where's that seam? <laughs> There's nobody there. We have run out of adjectives, Chuck. There's just no way to describe this guy. Coach here from the New York Jets, or a scout here from the New York Jets today. I hope he's taking notice. An amazing athlete. Extra point is up, and it is good, and it is 10 to nothing, Georgia Southern, and we'll be back. top of the Nevada Reno Wolfpack, the number one ranked team in Division I AA. In fact, the last ESPN poll, which was out at the end of November, had Nevada Reno ranked 17th in the nation, one notch ahead of the University of Georgia overall. There's James Witherspoon on the return. He's got some good blocking up front and brings it out to about the 27, 28 yard line. They closed that hole pretty quick, Chuck. I thought he was gonna get a few more yards in that. Good special teams play by Georgia Southern. And, Bill, you were telling me earlier that has not been one of the strong points of this club through the Southern. No, it has not. But uh, David Hodge, number five, was a guy who was down there on the stop, and they have really, really worked hard on this because uh, there have been times when we've um, put that ball short and we've wound up uh, having to defend a 60-yard field. So Eric Beavers has his group back out on the field to go on offense and looking to get on the scoreboard. They were three and out first time they had the football. That's Lucius Floyd. He's their leading ground gainer, and you can see why. He has a good gain there. Brings it out to the 38-yard line. Brad Bowen, who's a senior out of Plantation, Florida. Flag on the play, too. Uh, got a penalty down. It must be a personal foul, I think, against Georgia Southern. And that is the call. Personal foul, Georgia Southern, so they'll tack on some more yardage. Sammy Williams, number 99, is uh, the guilty party, I am told. Now, Southern has been known to do this through the year. They are, uh, and Ertz says we've got to stop it because uh, they've been known to have about 16 penalties uh, sometimes in a, in a game. And they said you just can't, uh, and maybe six real crucial ones, and you just can't uh, win ball games like that against teams the uh, quality of Nevada Reno. Scoring drive, incidentally, for Georgia Southern a while ago was 53 yards, eight plays, and the elapsed time was 413. So it didn't take them long to get it in the end zone. And for the first time this afternoon, the Wolfpack in Georgia Southern territory. And here goes Floyd again. Got a block on the right side and down inside the Georgia Southern 40 to the 39-yard line. Thomas Porter and Brad Bowen finally making the stop. But look at this move. Beautiful ball right through the hole. Beautiful block down there that allowed him to get all that yardage. Pickup of nine, second down in a yard. They call Lucius Floyd and Chavez Foger their F troop backs, and they are both dynamite. Floyd led the 
club in rushing this year. Last year it was Foger. Beavers to throw it. He's got a receiver. That is Floyd. They like to throw to him out of the backfield, and he finally takes it out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. That'll give him a first down and move the chains. Chris Aiken on the coverage for the Eagles. And now I see Eric Russell over on the sideline. He's, he's uh, conferring with his assistants. We've got to put a stop to this. He gives a lot of credit to his assistant coaches. And they have done a very good job of uh, using our personnel in the best possible way, Chuck. First and ten. Wolfpack, they're looking to get on the scoreboard. Down 10 nothing here in the first quarter. Beaver's rolling out. He's got some pressure from behind. And they chase him out of bounds. Number 26. Donnie Allen was over Donnie there Allen also. Danny Durham. And Danny Durham, both chasing him out of bounds. Danny's got excellent speed. He's a five-year player for Southern. Been with this program since its inception. Four-year starter. And uh, he really is good at putting pressure on the quarterback. Also good at interceptions. No gain at all. Second down, it'll still be 10 yards to go. We were looking at this playing surface earlier, and it's a little bit uh, muddy, and traction's a little uh, hazardous in areas. There goes Foger, or is that Floyd again? Lucius Floyd, number 31, the carrier Robert Underwood, steps up there and stacks him up hard. Short pickup. You talked about uh, starting this program and keeping the kids at home. Um, Chuck, Robert Underwood's a classic example, a kid from right out of Statesboro High School who has uh, been a starter almost the entire time he has been at Southern and done a great job. It's a big play now for Nevada Reno. They're down 10-0. They're facing third down, about eight or nine yards. Third and nine. Beavers looking to throw. The ball is deflected and caught. Number 46, that's Scott Treaty. That's the gentleman we were talking about earlier. Brad Bowen on the defense. It will not be enough for the first down. It'll bring up a fourth down, and now we've got another penalty flag thrown. This time it looks like it's against Nevada Reno. I know Robert Underwood was coming out of there real enthusiastic. I see some clapping of the hands. Number 87, Tyrone Hull clapping, so that would indicate certainly that that would be the case. It's a face mask penalty there. You don't see that very often. A face mask penalty Not on, on the offense. Yeah. So the officials will mark it off from the point of the catch, it looks like. There you see the call. Face mask infraction against the Wolfpack. Backs it up to the 39-yard line, and it is now fourth down. Came after the play had concluded, so it is now fourth down. And a long way to go, enough so that they're going to bring in Brett Dales and punt it away again. So Nevada Reno hurting themselves that time. Object here, of course, is to put Georgia Southern in a hole. And Brent's been averaging, what, 41 yards a kick, something like that? 41, and he goes for the corner. Let's see if he gets it. He's going to get it. Yeah, very close. They line it up and right about the 10-yard line. So Brad Dales knocks it out at the 10-yard line, and we'll be back with the Eagles on offense right after this. Yeah. Mackey Stadium in Reno, Nevada. Georgia Southern leading the University of Nevada Reno Wolfpack 10-0. Nearing the end of the first quarter, and the Eagles on offense, and there goes Ricky Harris. Ricky Harris breaks it outside. He's looking for a block. He cuts back to the inside, and he's finally dragged down at the 35-yard line by Henry Rowling. Rowling finally chased him down, but Ricky Harris got a great block on the right side, and I thought for a minute he was gone, Bill. Ricky, I think we... Um, uh, <laughs> Ricky, yes, okay, fine. Chuck, we've talked about this before, about how well Ricky Harris follows his blockers, and look at his balance on this one. I think everybody thought he was stopped back there, and the defensive back stopped running. That's why he was able to get as much good yardage as he could. Here he is directing traffic. Just a great run, and I'll tell you what, it, it, it shows a great poise the man to be able to stop and direct the traffic like that. Here Tracy Ham hands it on the trap play. Herman Barron. Barron uh, loses his footing and then is finally knocked down again by Rowling, and Rowling is having a great game. I was told in advance that he was their best defensive player, and he is 
certainly living up to that billing. He's all over the football field. We talked about how treacherous the footing was down there. See how he slipped down there with that right foot? It's a loss of a yard, so it'll be second down and 11 now for Georgia Southern. We have 16 seconds to play in the first quarter, so this will be the last play of the quarter if they get it off in time. We won't have to play those piece of zonies anymore for a second or two. Uh, the 25 second clock expired. Tracy tried to get the, uh, <laughs> he wisely, he looked up and he saw that he, he was gonna try to get the time out. He did not in time, so there will be a penalty and we'll be right back. Southern 10, Nevada, Reno, nothing, and we'll be back with the second quarter. Out here among the hills, and Georgia Southern now with a second down and 17 to go following the penalty. And Ham looking to put it in the air. Got all the time in the world, and now he breaks on the run. And there you see a great example of why you just cannot leave him alone one second. He saw the opening, broke up the middle, got about eight, nine yards. Lazovic finally uh, broke out of pass coverage and came back and made the stop, but not before Ham picked up eight yards. Speaking of coverage, Chuck, just look at the time that he's got. This little, this little offensive line, and I mean little comparatively speaking, just gives him all kinds of protection and opens all sorts of holes for the backs to run through. So now we're in a third down and nine situation. At the 33-yard line of Reno. Ham again looking to throw. Good protection again. Shoots it over the middle, and it is deflected incomplete. And the partisan Wolfpack crowd cheers. That's one of the few good defensive plays that have been made this afternoon on their part. Brian Kasky, number 48. He's a hometown boy right here from Reno and made the deflection. So on fourth down, in comes Tim Foley, and Tim Foley will try what will be a 50-yard field goal. Now, I was watching him warm up, and he was actually hitting and going in this direction, too, I might add, from as far away as 63 yards. So uh, 50 yards would be no problem for him. Excellent kicker. Got a little bit of a breeze at his back, and he hits it high and hard, and it is no good. Well, they took their time no falling good. out. Boy, they did. <laughs> So the field goal attempt is no good, and the Wolfpack will get it back. We'll be back. So the errant field goal effort by Georgia Southern comes up uh, a ride. Tim Foley hit it. I couldn't understand what was the matter with it. Apparently it was off to the left. That was the only thing I could figure out. That's the second week in a row that they've, they've taken their time calling a field goal, whether or not it was good. So Reno back on offense and Beavers. This time he hands it to Lucius Floyd, and Floyd gets a good block on the right side and comes out to about the 37 yard line. Wesley Lee, number 41, 5'11", 205 pounds. He's a senior. Got a man down Made for Georgia Southern. They've rushed out there. I can't see a number yet. But he's big. There you see Dr. Bob Swint, the team physician. There's a guy kneeling down in the middle there. Tom Smith, the trainer over him as well, and one of the other student trainers out there. Wesley Lee is a very intense player in for Robert Underwood right now, and I think one of the success of this, uh, the success of this program, Chuck, is the fact that Irk Russell shovels a lot of people in and out, so they never get overly tired. He uses a lot of people, and that's also good for morale. It makes everybody feel like they're a part of the team, and of course, uh, when you start using a, a large number of players uh, in this altitude, you need that, because as you can testify, walking up these steps here to, uh, and we're not in that bad of shape, Bill, but uh, if you came up the steps here at the stadium, it, uh, it'll get to you. The, uh, the injured player, I am told. Injured player number 91 is Chris Craig Walker. Craig Walker. Craig Walker is Larry Boone's backup man, and they're going to pull Craig up. Looks like he's finally getting back up to his feet. They'll help him off. It, it looks like his left knee. Let me quickly give you a score from the other playoff game that is underway, the other semifinal game. It is now Arkansas State 21 and Eastern Kentucky 7 in the third quarter. So 21-7, Arkansas State winning. 
And now we'll get back to action. Second down and about four and a half yards to go. Eric Beavers has his club up there. Scott Treaty comes to the Treaty comes to the near side. And here goes Chavez Foger and Foger now his first carry of the afternoon and look at him drag tacklers out of bounds just over the midfield mark. That was Brad Bowen. He was dragging with him as he went out of bounds. But not before he got the first down and a whole lot more. Can you go watch him get outside. Brad Bowen finally corralling him over there. David Hodge also in pursuit helping him help shoving him out of bounds over on that far sideline. Foger led the conference in rushing two years ago. This year, Lucius Floyd was the leading rusher in the Big Sky Conference. So both of those gentlemen can carry the football and successfully when given the opportunity. That's the first time we've seen Foger with it this afternoon. But now here he goes again. They thought they liked what they saw the last time, so they go back to him, and he gets about three. Foger and Floyd, they call F Troop out here, Chuck, and they get one of the things that uh, Edward Eves on the stop there for Georgia Southern. They both have over 1,000 yards this season. Dynamic offense Nevada Reno has, but so far they have not been able to dent the scoreboard. 10 nothing Georgia Southern leads it. We've got about 13 minutes to play in the first half. Sellout crowd at Mackey Stadium. And of course, the winner here advances to the Diamond Bowl in Tacoma next weekend. Beavers on the rollout, shoots the pass out. That's Tony Logan. Logan breaks one tackle and gets it down to about the 41-yard line. It will be close to the first down. I don't believe he quite got there. Nay Young, number three out of Savannah. And Danny Durham, number 26, he's a four-year starter, 5'11", 190, out of Albany, coming over to help on the tackle. One of the interesting things, since we were, we were worried about playing in a snowstorm or in real cold weather, Chuck, you notice that uh, our jerseys now have little pockets in them. Our trainers had to spend a lot of time sewing those pockets in this week. Third down and about a yard to go. So here's a big conversion play for the Wolfpack on a third down call and they give it to Foger and Foger's trying to get it outside the defense swarms and I believe they stopped him short they did they pulled him down at about the 41 yard line Danny Durham was a gentleman over there that would not let Mr. Foger get by him excellent lateral pursuit by Danny Durham watch him here finally gets him and grabs him by the jersey and now pulls him backwards and gets of course he gets some help from the defenders who come up but it's fourth down and they're going for it Chris Alt, who has had such a fine coaching record here at Nevada Reno, is going to go for it on fourth down. And Alt, amazing story about that gentleman. In all of his years in football as a player and as a coach has never been associated with a losing team at all. Never. So fourth down and a big play here for Nevada Reno. Southern's defense up there and looks like they want to come hard. And now we've got a whistle and let's see what the call will be. I think maybe somebody moved. The Georgia Southern players are applauding. Well, we have a procedure penalty against Reno, and that will not help, and now they'll have to punt it away. This is Lewis Broadcasting Company sports presentation. We hope you're enjoying it back there in Georgia. We appreciate your tuning in today. The Georgia Southern Eagles on top of this one, 10 to nothing with 11.24 to play. Tony Belzer will be back in punt formation for the Eagles. And again, that is Ricky Harris, I believe, deep for Georgia Southern. Tony Belzer. That is Belzer deep. I am sorry. That is Dales who is punting. And the punt goes into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. They'll bring it out to the 20. And Georgia Southern dodges a bullet and goes back on offense. Brent Dales didn't want to do that. You could see he was disgusted with himself, Chuck, because he was angling. He uh, wanted to get one of those angles again. But Georgia Southern, the last, uh, I believe, in um, two of the last three ball games they played have had a couple of 98-yard drives. And they've done it like in four plays and six plays. Young lady looks a little chilly, doesn't she? Yes, she does. And it is, cl the clouds are moving in a little bit more now. It's overcast. First and 10 at the Southern 20. Tracy Ham with his ham bone offense. Having a little trouble hearing, so he yells out those plays. Make sure everybody gets the right call. Ham's got it. He's got a hole. And now he pitches it out on the lateral. Herman Barron run out of bounds. They mark him out at the 45-yard line, a 25-yard pickup. And that Tracy Ham just lateral. I don't know if he had that one planned or. You never know with Tracy. He, that was an audible play to begin with. And uh, here he comes around the left side. Look at the blocking. Now, this guy outside thinks that somebody else has got the football. A lot of people thought Gerald had it. And here comes the pitch. 
right at the 29, and then that gets them another 16 yards out to the 45-yard line. Andre so Rhodes. a 25-yard pickup and a first down for Georgia Southern. Ham still has the ball, and Ham has a lot of yardage down to the 47-yard line of Nevada Reno. So into Wolfpack territory goes Georgia Southern again. Again, Chuck, he's using uh, Gerald Harris, who is the traditional ball carrier and the bread and butter playman, uh, making uh, the fake into Gerald and then keeping the ball himself. And here you see the um, the line here, the coaches on the sidelines here, kind of lining things up, drawing out defenses. It's Coach Healy there working on a yeah. That's the way to stop him, Coach. And when they Healy. come that way, somebody tackle him, right? <laughs> That's right, trying to stop that running game of Reno. Mike Healy has uh, is really been an excellent defensive coach. Second down in short yardage, and Ham just hands it right up the middle. And we've got a flag thrown, and that's usually an indication of offensive holding. Gary Miller getting his first carry of the afternoon and did a good job down to the 40-yard line, but they'll bring it back and penalize them, and that's exactly right. It'll be holding. Here's another look at it, though. Gary Miller, a very explosive backup man for Gerald Harris, and look how he just picks through that hole. Powerful runner, tall kid. So they'll back the Eagles up into their own territory, take it back to the 43-yard line, and it'll be second down and 11. To be honest with you, though, Bill, you start watching Tracy Ham, and you, you get the impression 11 yards isn't a heck of a lot of yardage to cover. No, not really. He, um, he has the ability to, to get 11 yards all by himself with no problem. Miller still in as the lone setback, but... Ham looking to throw, rolls right, now fires back. He's got a receiver and overthrows him. He was trying to hit Tony Belzer. Belzer cutting across the middle of the field and was open momentarily, but the pass just a bit high. Robert Ford, the defender, number 19, out of Long Beach, California. When you look down Nevada Reno's roster, awful lot of California players, and that is such a great territory for athletes, uh, as you well know, many, many come out of that California high school system. We're almost in the shadows of the California state line around here, too. It's not that far away. So now third and 11, a conversion situation. He's got a man open. That's Bowser, and Bowser's got the reception at the 24, 23 yard line. Great pass by Tracy Ham, and just when you've said everything you think <laughs> you can say about his running, he shows you that arm. Now that's a great throw. He goes to the outside, and look at the zip he puts on this ball and drops it right on the button. With a guy right in his face. And Belter, beautiful route. Watch this. Great concentration with a man right on him. He threw that ball before Belzer cut. That was just a beautiful pattern mm -hmm. between the two. And uh, <laughs> Folks, it's easy to see why Tracy Ham is a Kodak All-America football player. It is easy to see why he's the first player in college football history to run for 3,000 and throw for 5,000, and that's Gerald Harris who bangs it right up the middle and gets it inside the 20 down to about the 18-yard line. Whole middle of that Nevada Reno defense now taking a beating, but they're standing in there making the tackle, a pickup of four and second down and six yards to go. They've never faced an offense like this, Chuck. I think that's important to point out. A team from Texas ran a little bit of an option, but nothing like this. Well, what has me puzzled is I had expected to see the efficiency of the handbone offense and we have seen that but what has me a bit puzzled is I thought for sure we would see more point production coming out of Nevada Reno and that has not been the case and here's Ham and it's a touchdown Ham in the air and fires it Delano Little Delano Little number 80 with a reception 5'10 162 a fifth year senior out of Hinesville and the folks in Hinesville got to be cheering right now Georgia Southern now 16 to nothing over UNR Delano came back and enrolled in a semester of school so he could play this year. He wanted he had one more year of eligibility and he wanted to play and I'm glad he did. Great drive. Six plays, 80 yards. You see him, he just got that foot in bounds. Knew exactly where he was on that field. 25 yards on the pickup to the lateral to, to Harris and then the great pass to Belzer and then the one to Little and uh, what do you know? It's uh, suddenly a 17 to nothing game. So 17 to nothing, the Eagles on top and we'll be back. Seventeen to nothing, Georgia Southern leading the University of Nevada Reno, and it is Rob Whitten getting set to kick off for the Eagles once again. Claiborne is deep for the Wolfpack. As this contest has been all Eagles and mostly Tracy Ham. Claiborne at the ten. 
looking for a block. He's got one up the middle and gets it out to near the 30-yard line. Rob Witten, the kicker, had to come in and make the tackle. I know kickers don't like to do that. <laughs> All right, we're going to see that touchdown play one more time to Delano Little. Watch as Tracy Ham drops straight back to pass. Delano running a beautiful route and just manages to get that foot in bounds. Watch this. Right into the corner. Well defended, but you just can't defend a perfect play like that, Chuck. There it is. You only got to have the one down, and he did. 80-yard drive and six plays, taking only two minutes and 18 seconds. <laughs> so first and ten, and here is now Nevada Reno, and you know they got to be a little bit out of their game plan. Beaver's now scrambling, looking for somebody downfield. Finally finds a receiver. Tony Logan, and Logan tries to break a tackle and gets it out near midfield. Good ad-lib play by Beavers. As his protection broke down, he got to the outside and found Logan. Logan, they tell me, is probably the best athlete, best all-round athlete on the Wolfpack team, and I think you can see that a little bit of that there. Not only did he have the poise to come back and help his quarterback, but then he made the good moves to pick up some additional yardage. That really was an excellent improvised play by Beavers on that one. First and ten now for the Wolfpack at midfield mark. Beavers again going to throw. He's got a man open over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to hit number two, Calvin Sales, who was spiraling down through the middle, but uh, Terry Young was there on the defense, and the ball goes incomplete, so it'll be second down now in 10. I thought, Uncle Aaron, you see that he's a little shaken up on the play as he hit that ground pretty hard, Chuck. Um, I thought that we had a chance, uh, Georgia Southern had a chance at an interception. I told you it was Calvin Sales. It was actually Kevin Claiborne, and Claiborne is still down. He may just be out of breath. He's out of Reno, 5'8", 150. He's just a freshman. And you look down the, uh, the roster of the Reno club, and you see an awful lot of underclassmen. So they'll be good for a while to come, particularly when you look at those two backs they've got. Lucius Floyd, he's a junior. Chavez Foger, he's a sophomore. He's up and off the field. I think he's going to be all right, Chuck. That's good news. This is a team that was exuding confidence. They knew they were going to win this thing. One of the radio stations out here was giving away tickets to Tacoma next week as a prize. <laughs> I could have entered that contest, I'm sure, but uh, with the troubles that I had getting here yesterday, I'm not sure I'm looking to travel anytime too soon again. Mm. There's Beavers uh, dropping the ball. Oh, now here's a good play. On the screen. Going to work. That's Foger and Foger. With a big gain down inside the 40, first down for Nevada Reno to the 39-yard line. And Danny Durham does an excellent job for Georgia Southern of fighting off a blocker to make this tackle, or he's got more yardage. Watch this, Chavez Foger. Watch Danny. Uh, good effort. Came off the block and made the tackle. And Robert Underwood there to kind of finish it off. So now we see the Wolfpack offense starting to put something together. They are now down at the 39-yard line of the Eagles, looking to get on the scoreboard. They are down 17 to nothing with eight minutes to play in the first half. Reno again, 13-0, came into this contest, ranked number one. Foger gets uh, nailed in the backfield, number 50. Larry Boone. Larry Boone came barreling through there out of Conway, North Carolina. Known as a very aggressive player. He's the guy they also put in on short yardage. You know, we talked about the defenders who have come in during uh, on offense, Chuck, during uh, when they get down to short yardage. He likes to, he's a good blocker. That'll make it second down and 11. Take another look Watch at this Boone. great defensive play. He just came right up through the middle. Second 11, Beavers with Floyd and Foger behind him. That's Logan who goes in motion. Beavers rolls out and just off the fingertips of Lucius Floyd. Floyd is their best receiver out of that backfield, and they like to go to him, but he just couldn't quite pull that one in. So it'll be third down and 11. And at this point, you've got to start to think now that somewhere along the line here, Nevada Reno has got to put something together, or else they're going to be in big trouble come the second half. Boone came out for just a moment after that play. I don't know. He was uh, he was shaken up just a little bit on the play. Chuck, we thought we were going to do Star Trek V here today, the search for Chuck. <laughs> we tried to get you in here yesterday on those flights. Glad it, was, you're here. it was an adventure, <laughs> a 12-hour trip that was originally scheduled for six. It was fun. Scotty lost you in the transporter. Third and 11, and here's Beavers. He's got a receiver over the middle, and he's got a lot of yardage. That's number 83, Brian Calder, and Calder all the way down to the nine-yard line and out of bounds. Terry Young's the guy who saved it. Brian Calder coming over the middle, a two-time all-conference 
performer. As a sophomore and senior, he was hurt a lot last year, did not get to play a lot for this Wolfpack team. Here we go. Again, a beautiful pattern because you thought they had him stopped, and this guy's wide open across the middle. Southern has had some problems with good passers who, who can throw that ball well in the middle, Chuck. Well, Beavers can certainly do that. 5'10", 175. Oh. He's a senior out of Davis, California, and well-liked out here by football fans and just folks in general. He is a fine young man, and they, they speak very highly of him. Now a first and goal. That's Floyd as they try the left side of that eagle defense. Robert Underwood, number 34, makes the stop. Gain of about three, maybe four yards. We'll see where they put it down at the seven-yard line, it appears. Seventeen to nothing, Georgia Southern on top. If you've just joined us, but Nevada Reno now threatening this their deepest penetration of the afternoon at the Eagles seven-yard line, second down and goal. Beavers again gives it to Floyd. Floyd looking for some blocking help, but doesn't get it. There comes Boone to knock him down, along with Flint Matthews. Flint Matthews is a good playmaker. Chuck, watch. No gain on the play. Matthews grabs him from behind. Again, he's got that good speed that he can chase people down. Third down and seven. Here's Beavers now with them up in a third down and a goal situation for them. Rolls left and throws it. He's got a receiver in the end zone. Diving touchdown. Calvin Sales with a diving reception in the corner of the end zone of the Wolfpacks on the scoreboard. Beautiful play. Milton Gore was over there to defend Chuck, but there was absolutely nothing he could do. As you see, the zoney's going crazy down there. And that was a score they really needed to get back in this ball game. 17 to 6. Zendejas on to attempt the extra point. And pull Nevada Reno within 10 points. This should be automatic. Good snap, and the kick is good. So 17 to 7. The Eagles now lead by 10, and we'll be back. Crowd has not had a lot to cheer about until now, but they're Wolf back now with seven points and trailing 17 to 7, and set to kick off is Zendejas. Deep is Ricky Harris. And we'll see if Zendejas has uh, gotten this down any better since the opening of the game when he had two go out of bounds and he gets it to Harris. But Harris breaks a tackle and pops out to about the 31-yard line. Another good run by Harris. A lot of good speed, Chuck. Dwayne Norfleet. That last scoring 42. drive for Nevada Reno took nine plays. They went 70 yards and took three minutes and 16 seconds to do it. So back on offense goes Georgia Southern, now with a 10-point lead, looking to put some more on the board. 5.40 to play in the half. Last we heard, Arkansas State was leading Eastern Kentucky. And, of course, the winner of that game, the winner of this game, next weekend in Tacoma, the Diamond Bowl. Ham swarmed under. That's the first time that we've seen him knock down for a loss this afternoon. Henry Rowling came pouring through there, and they get him at the 29-yard line. Just excellent work. Ham had no place to go and nothing to do with that football except eat it. So second down and about uh, 12 yards now, a loss of two. Looked like Tracy was hoping that, that middle would open up and he could run that quarterback draw. He stepped back, was kind yeah. of waiting the count, and then suddenly there was the defender and rolling along with some help from Mike Lazovic. No hole there. He's having to signal his audible. Wants to go up top. Now he's being chased. Look at him all the way back to the 10 and finally throws it incomplete. And quite honestly, it looked to me like Tracy just uh, thought the better of that uh, whole situation. He was trying yeah. to go to Keith Jeter, but threw it at his feet as he realized Jeter had no place to go. In fact, would have also lost additional yardage. Very smart play, very heady play by Tracy Ham. Henry Rowling was a guy who was out chasing him again, and Rowling is just having an outstanding afternoon, Chuck. Well, Nevada Reno's defense now feeling the part of getting a little bit back into this contest. They'd given up 17 points. Their offense had been shut out, but now their offense has come through for them, put seven points on the board. Now they're going to get back into this thing a bit. Third down and 12. 
That's really brought the crowd to life. Him on the option play, and he swarmed under. Andre Rose, number 85. Again, you can see it. He just sort of slips down, but he didn't have anywhere to go anyway, so it didn't make much difference. He had some help slipping down, and Pat Parker's into punt. And that's the first time we've seen that this afternoon, so on comes Parker for the kick. Parker out of Savannah, averaging 37.1 yards per kick, and there's a flag down. We're going to have a roughing call. And he really took a shot, too. Pat Parker is going to be, uh, they're going to charge him with uh, roughing the kicker, and that's going to be a big break for Georgia Southern. Well, I'll tell you what, those are the kind of calls that coaches, uh, <laughs> and if, you know, if you don't believe me, I'll tell you what, you can, you can talk to uh, many pro coaches. I know last week Ron Meyer with uh, the Colts thought that uh, he had lost a contest. Dwayne Norfleet is the culprit gentleman who was charged <laughs> with running into the punter. Pat Parker goes down, and so Georgia Southern gets the ball back and uh, new life. Automatic first down. We'll move it forward here. They don't like the call, Chuck, but the rules do state unless you get a piece of that football, that is roughing the kicker. That is a personal foul on a first down, and out to the 43-yard line now goes Georgia Southern. Crowd still yelling a bit, but that'll do no good at this point. <laughs> Herman Barron in motion. Tracy wants to throw it, and he finds uh, temporarily Ricky Harris. Harris had it in his mitts and turned to go, but just couldn't uh, quite control the football. Kent Donathan was over on the coverage. And that was just a simple case of uh, Ricky wanting to run before he had that football, Chuck. That's all there was to it. Sometimes, you know, Bill, you get out there in that, uh, that open area. Mm -hmm. And now we've got an illegal substitution call against Nevada Reno, so the, the down will not count. Georgia Southern gets a break there. I take that back. That is uh, too many men on the field. That's what that is. Twelve players. No wonder they were doing so well. <laughs> what was it? Bill Curry was talking about in that Wake Forest game. He said he talked to all of his guys and what was wrong. Everybody said they were double teams. Said no wonder Wake Forest doing so well. There are 22 players out there for him. The first and ten now for Georgia Southern. Two penalties aiding this drive. Here's Tracy Ham. Look at the cuts. Look at the moves. And now he's got an open field to the inside and finally caught from behind. Bernard Ellison finally caught him by the top of the shoulder pads from behind at the 25-yard line, but not before another Georgia Southern first down. Oh, okay, whenever 48 on the defense is a guy you want to be keeping your eyes on is Tracy sidesteps people just right and left. <laughs> that guy's still wondering where his shoes are, isn't he? <laughs> Kind of got faked out of them. That was Brian Caskey. Another first down for the Eagles. This would be their third on this drive, but their second, or, or I should say their first on their own. The other two came by penalty. Here's Tracy putting the ball up. Belzer leaps, and it's deflected incomplete. Number 24, Bernard Ellison, almost had the interception right at the goal line. He was also going for the football because as you watch one more time, here comes Tracy. He's back to pass. And the defender's actually going to nudge Belzer out of the way, but he's going for the football, no doubt about it. And almost got it as it was dropping down. Belzer did a good job, I think, delaying the uh, defender on that play, Chuck. A lot of times that happens uh, where the, uh, the offensive man can become the defender real quick to keep him from making the interception. And a substitution at center, too, for Georgia Southern. Jay Marshall now into the game out of Dalton. Tracy still with the football, now pitches it back. And number 61 is Mike Lazovich, and he had Ricky Harris's number as he came around there. He wasn't buying the fake on that option. That was an idea, I think, that uh, didn't work out at all because Tracy should have kept here. Pitches it right to Ricky Harris, who had a defender on him. Ricky almost got out of that mess. Lazovich is a great story. Uh, Scott Lamar Lamary is the normal linebacker in that position, and uh, he went down with an injury about three games ago. Lazovich stepped in and has been the uh, team's leading tackler now for the last three games. Uh, now Georgia Southern has taken a timeout. Three minutes to five seconds to play. Georgia Southern leads it by 10, 17 to 7, and we'll be back. For some more, Tracy Ham rolls, looks and fires, threaded the needle to Belzer, and Belzer scores. 
<laughs> Gee, what a great throw. He put that ball between two defenders right into the arms of Tony Belzer. What a great throw by Tracy Ham. And Belzer had beaten his men. Got away from the grasp of one man. Threw it into a crowd, too, Chuck. That could have easily been intercepted. And instead, it's seven points for Georgia Southern. Well, six. Tim Foley, pretty much of an automatic, although he did have he did have the longest chain of uh, unbroken um, extra points that was stopped this year. 23 to 7, and it is now 24 to 7. So Georgia Southern now 24 to 7. They've got their 17-point lead back. And I have another score back in from uh, Arkansas and uh, Arkansas State, I should say, in Eastern Kentucky. And it is now 21 to 10, I am told, in the fourth period. Arkansas State leading Eastern Kentucky 21 to 10 with a few minutes to play in the fourth period. So Arkansas State could very well find itself in Tacoma, Washington next weekend in the Diamond Bowl. And the way things are going here this afternoon, it would be against none other than Irk Russell's Georgia Southern Eagles. And I tell you, you look at Irk Russell's record, folks, and in the years that he has been at Georgia Southern, 45 and 15 losses, 45 wins, 15 losses, one tie, a 746 winning percentage. The NCAA only considers the last three years because it was a club sport the first two years at Georgia Southern that Irk was there. And those uh, three years is even a better winning percentage, an 821 winning percentage, a 32 and 7 record. And he's unbeaten in playoff action. He is probably one of the great geniuses of human psychology of all time, Chuck, I, without a doubt. The kids just love him. They love playing for him. And everybody in Statesboro and South Georgia loves him. Did he bring the Eagle Creek water? That's what I want to know. Yes, he did. We'll tell you about that in just a moment as Rob Witten kicks off. Witten hits this one pretty deep. And right at the goal line. That is Claiborne. And Claiborne comes out to about the 17-yard line. Maybe he'd, uh, he had that one to do over again. He'd think about it and stay back there and get it at the 20. Here's a look at the scoring drive for Georgia Southern. Seven plays, 69 yards. Of course, the two big penalties that aided the drive, 248 the time. And we are coming uh, precariously close to the end of the first half, 253 to play. Southern leads at 24 to 7. Hope you're enjoying the uh, activity from Mackey Stadium this afternoon back in Georgia. We've got five stations around the state carrying the game this afternoon. A lot of interest in Georgia Southern trying to repeat as Division I AA national champions. There's Beavers shooting it over to Lucius Floyd. And Floyd gets it out of bounds, saves that time on the clock, and picks up four yards. And we want to thank everybody for the faith they've had in the uh, Lewis Broadcasting Sports Network, too, that, uh, to bringing this for you and the folks at Western Productions who are in WSB-TV in Atlanta that's carrying it, WJBF in Augusta, WLTZ Columbus, WGXA in Macon, WJCL Savannah. Thank you, everybody. Second down and seven. Foger and Floyd back. Logan in motion. Beavers again going to throw. Scrambles looks desperately now as the protect protection breaks down and he finally finds... Calvin Sales, who went high in the air to pull it down at the 28-yard line. That ought to be just about enough for a first down. Flint Matthews on the coverage for Georgia Southern. He did it again. Watch this. Great at improvising as Donnie Allen is chasing him down and finally gets him. Here comes Donnie and sacks him just after he releases this football. Clock now continues to move. They had to stop it momentarily to move the chains, as it does in college football on a first down. But first and ten now for the Wolfpack at their own 28-yard line. Beavers again looking to throw. Now has to scramble. Finally finds a receiver. That's Treaty. Treaty the big guy, the tight end, 6'2", 215, and he gets it all the way out to the 45-yard line. That'll be another first down for the Wolfpack. Robert Underwood makes the stop for the Eagles. He's the guy threading the needle this time, Chuck. Watch this right straight through that little tunnel of Eagle defenders. And give Treaty uh, credit, too, for finding that little opening in the zone defense. David Hodge and Robert Underwood finally drag him down. They definitely need another score before halftime. Beavers again to the air. And again, he's got a receiver. That's Lucius Floyd. No, that is Tony Logan. Logan out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Right in front of Irk Russell and the Eagles bench. And that also stops the clock with 150 to play. The third first down now on this drive for Nevada Reno. They trail 24 to 7. If you have just joined us, it has definitely been the Tracy Ham show this afternoon. 
He has been spectacular running the football. He has thrown for two touchdowns. But Nevada's finally getting warmed up here, Chuck. Beavers again drops and rolls. And he finds somebody and he has to throw it away. Finally just tosses it away. Everybody was covered downfield as the Eagles secondary doing an excellent job. Sammy all those gentlemen back there, Nay Young, Chris Aiken, all doing a great job. Sammy Williams is the guy putting the pressure on him to force that throw. Saw Chris Alt on the sideline. You know, we were talking about Irk's uh, record. Chris Alt's record <laughs> is uh, fairly impressive. 90, 94 wins, 35 losses, and one tie at Nevada. <laughs> Second down and 10, 143 to play in the half. Beavers over the middle and it's almost intercepted. Robert Underwood had it in his hands and just couldn't hang on to it. Trying to go to Scott Treaty again, but Underwood was the man that had the best shot at picking off that pass. So that'll bring up now third down and 10. 138 to play. You know, the backup to Eric Beavers is a gentleman named Jack Stanley, who is a senior, 6'3", 200 pounds, that actually the pro scouts like even better than they like Eric Beavers. They say he's a, got the NFL prototype size and great arm. Here's Beavers, though, with the great mobility, and he rolls out and fires it, and let's see, incomplete. He was out of bounds. Tony Logan was the man who came up with the football, but he could not get the one foot down. And it'll go incomplete and bring up fourth down, and on comes the punting team for the Wolfpack. Once again, it was Sammy Williams who was providing that, uh, that great pressure that forced him to throw that ball, I think, a little bit before he wanted to. Beavers has had to scramble uh, quite a few times this afternoon, and he's used the rollout effectively. Nobody back for Georgia Southern. Well, Brett Dales will apparently attempt to just angle this one out of bounds if he can try to hit that coffin corner. And a good kick, and it is... Rolls into it. the end zone. They could no, not control it. No, I think he, not control he's going to mark him. No, it's he's touchback. Oh, is it? Okay. It's touchback. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. The crowd won't like it, but those are the rules. <laughs> he could not control it. Brian Kasky did a good job of trying to get the ball back into the field of play, but it was then knocked into the end zone, and so since they could not control it, it'll come out to the 20, and it'll be first and 10 for Georgia Southern with a minute 23, and I'll tell you, a minute 23 <laughs> for Tracy Ham, he could get two in here. Oh, yeah. Twenty-four to seven. Chuck Dowdle, along with Bill Edwards and Dave Williams, down on the sideline. We hope you're enjoying the activity this afternoon. We had expected a high-scoring game, and we have seen that at least from Georgia Southern's end. This is a first and ten. Ham still with the football, and he thought better of pitching it out, and just keeps it, and is knocked down right at the line of scrimmage. Wise decision. Lazovich, who comes over and knocks him down, he had Keith Jeter there, but I think he just decided, ah, I better hang on to this rather than risk a turnover. Mm -hmm. And that, again, shows the heady play that Ham can come up with when he has to. You know, I was telling you earlier this afternoon, I, I thought when we went into this contest that it was going to be such a high-scoring game. You know, UNLV's basketball team is in here tonight <laughs> to play Nevada Reno, and I, I thought it was a good possibility we might have the highest-scoring game. <laughs> But when you look at what these two teams have done, there's the handoff right up the middle. Gerald Harris, 44 seconds to play in the half. I think they're Bill just going to be content. Kent Donathan, yeah. Just going to be content to run this one out. I think Nevada may have called the timeout now. And wisely so. A timeout taken by Nevada Reno because that'll bring up a third down in about eight. And perhaps they could get the ball in good field position, perhaps even uh, good enough field position to attempt a field goal in the waning seconds of the half. That's right. Tracy wants to go over and talk things over with Irk. The Eagle Creek water we had mentioned, Chuck, uh, for people who don't know that story, the, um, there is a little ditch <laughs> that runs by uh, the Georgia Southern practice field that Irk has dubbed Eagle Creek. Last year, before the Northern Iowa game, he went out and got uh, about a gallon jug of that stuff, got on the bus with it. Uh, Dr. Swint, the team physician, said, I was wondering what in the world this guy was doing. He got to the Unidome in, uh, at Nevada. In Nevada, that's where we are now. He got uh, to the Unidome in Iowa and started sprinkling the water in the end zone and said, now this will keep Nevada or keep um, northern Iowa out of the end zone. It will let the Eagles in. He sprinkled it all the way down the field and into the other end zone. 
And he did the same thing in Tacoma. They did the same thing against Nickel State last week, sprinkling it on their team bus. <laughs> and it's worked. We better bottle that stuff. Who's going to argue with success? <laughs> Third down and eight. Ham looking to throw and throw deep, and he's got a receiver wide open, and there had to be some confusion in the coverage. Yeah. Tony Belzer was wide open on the sideline, and fortunately for the Wolfpack, Tracy just uh, overshot him because otherwise that's six points. There was nobody over there. It had to be a, 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 some confusion in uh, Nevada's defense. Yeah, I think so. So the incompletion stops the clock with 32 seconds, so Nevada Reno will get one more opportunity. Pat Parker gets the snap and gets the punt away, a very quick punt. Well, he got a beauty more did he ever. All the way back to the 29-yard line. That's Brian Caskey. Caskey with some good moves and finally gets down at about the 42-yard line. He's knocked down. 19 seconds to go. It's a 45-yard kick. 47-yard kick. I'm sorry, my math is not as good as uh, it probably should be. Good run back, though. So Nevada Reno now with 19 seconds with which to work and field position at their own 42. Be interesting to see what they come up with here. They trail 24 to 7. Beaver's looking deep, as you might well expect, and he's got a receiver and hit hard. Number 10, Thomas Porter. Thomas Porter really put the wrap on Calvin Sales, who was the receiver, and the clock continues to move. Well, it stops momentarily for them to move the chains. 11 seconds left, the first down. That's really not the situation with which Nevada Reno is worried right now. The time is, and now the clock is back moving again, eight seconds. Beavers again to the air, and he's got another receiver again. That is Sales, and out of bounds with three seconds left at the 27-yard line. Here comes Zendejas. Oh, Marty Zendejas now will attempt one. It'll be a 44 yards. They'll spot the ball at the 34. It'll be at a slight angle and kicking right at the zonies. That's that... Uh, group of raucous supporters that the Wolfpack have show up at every game. They sit in the end zone. They call themselves the Zonies. And I was noticing even some of the Wolfpack players wearing little towels that say Zonies. <laughs> so with three seconds left, Zendejas will attempt to cut the Georgia Southern lead to but two touchdowns at 24 to 10. And he gets plenty of leg into it. And it is good. Yeah. So as the half ends, Georgia Southern Watches a 44-yard field goal sail through, and Nevada Reno goes in 24 to 10 down to Georgia Southern. So the Eagles with a 14-point lead here at intermission. And we're going to try to get down on the sideline to Dave Williams and Georgia Southern's head coach, Herc Russell. Let's go down now on the sideline to Dave Williams. Dave, take it. Okay. Coach, 24-10 uh, at the half, a well-played first half for the most part. A shame there we uh, gave him that field goal at the end, though. Well, it's always bad to leave the field having been scored on. That gives them the momentum. But I think our players are playing hard. Uh, I'm pleased at this point that we can have that kind of a cushion at halftime. But let me tell you this, that's not enough. All right, quickly, one last question. What about the, uh, the rough and the punter down here? That seemed to be a... Uh, a swing uh, for the action, and we came back and we got the... Uh, they had two 15-yard penalties that uh, really hurt them. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm glad we got the rough and the kicker penalty because that kept us alive and led to a score. I right, got to go. Luck. Good luck. Okay, Chuck, back up to you. Thank you very much, Dave, and congratulations, Coach, on the first half. 24-10, to 10, Georgia Southern leading University of Nevada, Reno. We'll be back with the halftime activities right after this. Broadcasting Sports Network as we bring you the Georgia Southern game. Georgia Southern up 24 to 10 at halftime over the University of Nevada, Reno. They wanted us to make sure as we talked to David Bucky Wagner, the uh, athletic director at Georgia Southern College, that uh, the folks out here pronounce it Nevada, and this is the University of Nevada, Bucky. But let's uh, talk about uh, some good things that are going on at Georgia Southern. I know that you enjoy the score at halftime, but 14 points is by no means a comfortable margin. Oh, certainly, Bill, particularly when we have to kick off in the second half and give it back to their potent offense. It's going to be just one of those cliffhangers. And the 
We have tried to talk to the people before around the state, and uh, Georgia Southern is beginning to uh, to get some, some good exposure and the fact that they are on their way to perhaps an unprecedented second national championship in a row. And I think for the people out there to, to realize that what the Georgia Southern boosters have done and uh, get, getting this program off the ground and keeping it flying has been one of the phenomenal success stories in college football. Well, Bill, we couldn't be here without Southern Boosters Incorporated. Uh, Southern Boosters have been in existence about five years and they have provided the scholarship money for our, our athletes. Uh, Southern Boosters built Paulson Stadium, a $5 million project. We are now in a $3 million capital fund drive to try to get coaches' offices for Coach Russell, a nice weight facility. And uh, it's just so important at this, at this point in our, in our development that uh, our Southern Boosters and those people that are, are really behind Georgia Southern stand up and support us and, and bring their gifts to us. We really have a lot of building yet to do. We've got uh, 12 coaches in two offices. When you start a football program, a lot of things that you don't think about uh, that you have to develop are there, such as coaches' offices and the nice weight facility and, and some of the perquisites that many of our opponents have that we have to develop. We've had great uh, beginning. We've got a great facility in Paulson Stadium, and we just have to stand up and get behind the Eagles and continue to grow because Georgia Southern is good for Georgia. It's good for Georgia Southern College. Our football team has really made an impact, and we really want to keep growing. It has indeed. The, uh, the enthusiasm that the football team has generated on the campus and around the state, I understand that applications are, are up in, a, in an era when there are a lot of colleges who are losing enrollment or applications aren't coming in as much. We're up something like, is it 43%, 83%? There's some phenomenal it's just a, just a tremendous... Uh, growth we were up 600 students last year and uh, the growth looks just phenomenal for the year to come georgia southern college has always been a great place intercollegiate football has been able to expose georgia southern college to the people throughout the state and now everyone can see just how good a place georgia southern state for georgia is to come to school and to continue your education talking about bucky wagner the athletic director of georgia southern college in case you're wondering why you can't see us we were in one of the largest press boxes in the world i think uh Bucky, this thing runs about the 100-yard length of the stadium, but uh, they give most of the space to the boosters. We're in a little cramped quarters, and our camera is way outside somewhere, so you won't be able to see us. That's why we're showing you shots of the field down here. Speaking of shots of the field, um, we're going to be talking about how just what a nice facility that Paulson Stadium is, but first, we're going to be back on the Lewis Broadcasting System. We remind you, it's halftime. Georgia Southern up by a score of 24 to nothing. We'll be right back. Nothing beats the high I feel while playing a good game of basketball or the excitement after a great day on the court. It's a real special feeling. I tell you one thing, drugs or alcohol couldn't make me feel that good. Don't let anyone tell you drugs or drinking are going to make you feel good. Take it from me, drugs just get in your way and prevent you from doing your best. What else can I say? Drugs make losers out of users. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. Back at Mackey Stadium, it is halftime. Georgia Southern up by a score of 24 to nothing over favored Nevada Reno, and it was heavily favored Nevada Reno, I understand, earlier in the week. Although we're out in the probably one of the gambling capitals of the world, Dr. Bucky Wagner, athletic director of Georgia Southern, the, um, they can't bet on this game in Nevada because it's a state law. They can't take, uh, they can't take bets on it, so anybody betting on it's going to have to go outside the state clandestinely, shall we say? Yes, they were... They had us a 16-point underdog in the, in the paper this morning, and I'm sure there were a lot of Georgia Southern fans who would like to take in that. Isn't that the truth? But uh, it, I had understood that it was, at one point, it had gotten down to eight, at least in some places. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is that uh, we are in a, a nice facility here at Nevada Reno. We have a beautiful new stadium. One of the things that you talked about in building that football program, there was no stadium to play in at first. We, uh, um, Statesboro High School, Womack Field, was nice enough to, to let us use their facility for a couple of years while ours was being not only built, but people just came out of the woodworks to donate to this thing. They certainly did. Uh, Alan Paulson, uh, well, really, M.C. Anderson in Garden City uh, really gave us a quarter of a million dollars to get us started and, and to make us legitimate and make people know that we were serious about building a stadium. M.C. Anderson came in and did about $800,000 worth of, of earth-moving uh, work to clear our land and to build the natural bowl to build our stadium on. And Alan Paulson stepped forward and gave us a million dollars to get us on our way. And Morrison and Lupton 
built us a nice facility building with a big booster room, entertainment room on the top of it. And uh, Glenn Brandt gave us the money for the field. And we just had a lot of people uh, really come out and support Georgia Southern College, Georgia Southern Athletics. And it was a great beginning. And we've just got to continue that now and continue our growth because uh, something significant is happening in Southeast Georgia. That's true. And, uh, and we only are beginning. Uh, we've gotten uh, a lot better crowds this year, but uh, there's still tickets to be sold. There certainly are, and we just uh, we sold about 3,500 season tickets this year. We hope to go well over 5,000 next year, and it's just really exciting football in the prettiest little stadium in America, and I know that all our fans that have, have been coming to our games and we have been filling our stadium with uh, crowds near 17,000, 15,000, that uh, they really have a good time and they really have a full uh, college football weekend. Bucky, you really spared no expense on that stadium. I know that it's built, uh, the, the field itself is on about uh, four or five feet of sand. They just grow the grass right over the sand. Any rain that comes on the field is quickly absorbed through that sand. We'd have to have a monsoon out there to get any water on that well, field. The, field. the field is supposed to take a 10 inch rainfall in an hour and still be able to <laughs> Oh my to word. Play on. <laughs> that, is a, that is a really nice stadium. We all right, so we're going to be back. Uh, the score is 24 to 10 at halftime. Georgia Southern, we're about nine and a half minutes away from kickoff, and we'll be back after this local break. Back at Mackey Stadium in Reno, Nevada, and the score is 24 to 10. Georgia Southern over heavily favored Nevada, Reno, 13 and 0, undefeated, and, uh, well, of course they'd be undefeated. But uh, the first half statistics are out. We'll run those down in just a few minutes. Dr. Bucky Wagner, the athletic director um, for the Georgia Southern Booster Program, or Georgia Southern Eagles all together. Bucky, you have come into this program just from its inception. To, to watch it grow has had to have been a thrill for you when uh, they hired Irk Russell and they got you and things really started to roll. Well, it's just been a tremendous, tremendous trip <laughs> over the past <laughs> five years, I guess. Uh, we've just had so much good happen to us and so many people have gotten behind the program. And Dr. Dale Lick, our president, uh, provided great administrative support. We have a great faculty at Georgia Southern College that's been behind the program. Our student body has just been tremendous. Our student body, I've never been to a place where we've had more support from our student body and our faculty than I've been at Georgia Southern College. It's just been, it's been a great feeling for me to know that intercollegiate athletics can have this type of an effect on an institution in such a positive way. It also is good uh, once uh, once the football program gets started. That is really the, one of the revenue sports, if not the revenue sport. Uh, this this helps out the other sports programs, does it not? Oh, it certainly does. All our sports programs have increased uh, since uh, since we started football, and football will bring in a million dollars or so itself. Uh, but our basketball program is at five straight winning seasons. We've been to the NCAA tournament. Frank Kearns has a good football or a good basketball team this year. Jack Stallings has just missed the, the uh, regional playoffs in baseball the last two years with 39 wins. And uh, this year he had the eighth best recruiting season in uh, the country by Collegiate Baseball uh, Magazine. And so we're looking, we're looking forward to getting baseball back where it needs to be as one of the real strong leaders in the South. Uh, golf, has, golf has always been strong and we have four good players this year and we hope that it gets back and Joe Blankenbaker with his tennis just wins 20, 25 matches a year, whether, whether he wants right, to or not. All right, all right. There's swimming and soccer and all that other stuff. And, folks, we're going to be back getting ready for that second half kickoff right after we pause for this. Back at Mackey Stadium, and there you see the mountains just behind Mackey Stadium in Reno, Nevada. And there you see the halftime statistics where Georgia Southern is leading in first downs, 13 to 11. In rushing yards, look at that, 195 to 31. Passing yards, 109 for Georgia Southern. But it's Nevada Reno that has got the big yardage passing with 165. They've gone up five times, Georgia Southern has, for, um, uh, let's see, an average of 12 yards or so, and that's 14 times for 20 for the University of Nevada, Reno. Possession time, Georgia Southern's had the ball for 18 minutes and 12 seconds. Nevada, Reno, only 11 minutes and 48 seconds, and that can definitely make the difference. Uh, we're talking with Bucky Wagner, the athletic director of Georgia Southern College. And Bucky, uh, being on the ground floor of a program like this and watching it, uh, and watching it grow has got to be probably the thrill of your career, is it not? Oh, it certainly has. And to be able to, to see all the excitement and all our people and to see what the intercollegiate athletic program has done. It just, 
you know, it's just really been a blessing. God's just really been good to us. It really has. And the people of Southeast Georgia have uh, have responded quite well. I think this is going to be, at one point, uh, we're trying to get university status, of course, eventually for Georgia Southern, and this could be a good step in that direction. Well, I, we certainly hope so, because we, we've got a lot of people in Southeast Georgia to, to serve, and they certainly need a, a good, strong regional institution to, to provide the technical knowledge that that is needed to continue to, to develop the area. Dr. Bucky Wagner, Athletic Director of Georgia Southern, thank you very much for stopping by to join us. Scores 24 to 10 at halftime in favor of Georgia Southern from Mackey Stadium. We'll be back right after we pause for this. You get bitter banking service all around. Sea Island Bank is the best in town. The choice is clear, so make it today. Sea Island Bank is the better service way. We're the better service bank. Professional experience, that's the key. We're the better service bank. Sea Island Bank. Sea Island Bank is your better service bank. And you see Georgia Southern coming back on the field for the second half. This is Mackey Stadium where Georgia Southern is up by a score of 24 to 10. Bill Edwards along with Chuck Dowdle and also Dave Williams down on the sidelines. We're going to take a look at the first half highlights and show you how, just how Georgia Southern built up that 24 to 10 lead as the Georgia Southern players come back onto the field. Your first play that you're going to see is the first Georgia Southern touchdown to make the score 7 to nothing. And Irk Russell coming back on. Here comes uh, the man in motion, and here comes Tracy Ham as he's going to be checking off right at the line, watching his man go by. He will swing out to his left, cut back inside. This one's planned all the way for Tracy. He goes right up the middle, gets past that initial um, little bit of a line there, and goes right on into the end zone. Also, Ham had some great runs in the first half. Watch him as he goes on this uh, second um, run here as he gives it off to Ricky Harris. Ricky Harris is just stumbling along. He finally breaks through, and watch this great run by Ricky as he goes inside following his blockers. Ricky is extremely good at following his blockers on that, and you're going to see the second touchdown for Georgia Southern coming up here in just a moment as Nevada Reno comes back onto the field. Here comes Tracy. Here he is checking off at the line of scrimmage. I'll try to get back to that for you in just a moment. But it was uh, Tracy, I believe this was the throw to Tony Belzer, if I'm not mistaken. But we'll just check it out. No, Delano Little, I believe, is the guy that's going to be on the end of this. Tracy dropping back, and here's Delano right there, getting inside Coffin Corner for another seven points for Georgia Southern. And the third touchdown coming for Georgia Southern. And uh, this one is going to be coming up here just a second. As uh, the teams get back on the field, the referees meeting there in the center. What do you suppose they talk about down there, Chuck? <laughs> I'm probably talking about uh, what will happen here in the second half. Down 14 points, Nevada, Reno. Everybody thought there'd be more points on the board uh, from that football team uh, here this afternoon. It just hadn't been the case. Uh, Georgia Southern's defense done such a great job. Here's the throw to Belzer. Right, here's that third touchdown for Georgia Southern. Watch him thread the needle on this. And Belzer is right behind the defenders. Once he catches it, there is nobody there to stop him. And Georgia Southern leading by a score of 24 to 10 at halftime. But there is still a long way to go. And Tracy that Ham. That gentleman that you're watching right there had, ready for this, 188 yards of total offense in the first half. He had 79 yards on the ground. He had 109 yards through the air. 188 yards in the first half alone. Uh, I mean, <laughs> most <laughs> Georgia Southern fans are accustomed to that sort of thing. But to those of us who are just accustomed to watching the normal college football players we <laughs> 188 yards is pretty good for a couple of weeks and, yeah let alone one half of one play we're just about ready to start the second half and Georgia Southern will kick things off to begin the second half now of course Nevada Reno got the three points just at intermission as Marty Zendejas had that 44 yard field goal there and we have a penalty against Georgia Southern the yellow flag was dropped uh, right about the point of tackle, and so let's see. They'll mark it off, and it's a big one. 15 yards out to the 40, make it the 39-yard line. Not a good and way to start off the second half. Referee explaining things, and there it is, a personal foul. Illegal block against Georgia Southern. Robert Underwood was uh, questioning that call. He didn't understand it at all. Apparently a Georgia Southern man went low mm -hmm. and on those kickoffs they like to keep everything up above the waist because of the right knee injury factor. Here goes Chavez Foger and Foger is 
swarmed under at about the 39-yard line for no gain. Clint Matthews. Clint Matthews, number 58. I think it's Lincolnton. I think there's going to be hold. Oh, it's going to be clipping against Nevada Reno. I thought they were going to get holding for a second on um, against Thomas Porter. Not not against him, but uh, holding Thomas Porter there a minute ago. You can watch the replay. Here he comes down, and now they're going to mark it off. So we get a little of that back, Chuck. Get a lot of that back, in yeah. fact. <laughs> uh, to be exact, you get it all back. So they, they take it back to the 24-yard line where it was on the return to begin with, only now it really works to Nevada Reno's disadvantage because now they are staring at what will be first down and 25 yards to go. So long way home for a first down here for the Wolfpack to start the second half. Beavers in the first half had a pretty decent half throwing the football. He was three for four. Well, that is not correct. Hang on a second. I've got it over here. He was 14 for 20. There you go, for 165 yards. Beavers rolls to the right. He's looking to throw. Zips it upfield, and it is incomplete. He was trying to go to Tony Logan, number 47. Brad, Brad Bowen, Bowen was after came him. over and almost had the interception. The ball was deflected in the air momentarily before finally falling incomplete, so it'll be second down now in 25. Folks wanted interference on that. Tyrone Hull was causing a lot of pressure on, uh, on the quarterback. But Brad was going for that football. Bill, of teams that have been in the one double-A playoffs, Division One double-A playoffs, you know, you have three of the four most prevalent schools still uh, in action. Eastern Kentucky had been in it 14 times. This club, Reno, had been in it 11 times. Furman, nine. Georgia Southern, seven. Right. Seven games. There's the pass complete to Logan this time as Beavers hits his man right at the 39-yard line. They'll mark it at progress to the 40 where he's out of bounds. Nay Young on the coverage, but that'll be enough for a 15-yard, uh, make it a 16-yard pickup, and it'll bring up third down now and nine yards to go. Here's a pass outside to Tony Logan. Beautifully executed play. These guys are dangerous, Chuck. So a conversion attempt coming up now. Third and nine for the Wolfpack at their own 40-yard line. They trail it by 14, 24 to 10. We're in the second half, just underway in the third quarter. Beavers looking out and almost intercepted. Number 58, that was Flint Matthews diving for the pass intended for Chavez Foger. And I'll tell you what, if Matthews had been able to pick that football off. Six points. Uh, uh, absolutely, there was nothing in front of him but white stripes and green grass. Here it is coming at you. Just out of his reach. So on fourth down now, on will come the punting unit. That's Brett Dales for Reno. And Tony Belzer. Interesting, interesting gentleman. He is a pre-med student with a 3.8 grade point average. <laughs> Not a particularly good punt. Belzer has it at his own 25-yard line, and down he goes. Good All coverage. sorts of coverage downfield. Number 40, Bob Blanda makes the initial hit. So Georgia Southern gets the football back for the first time in the second half. They have a 14-point lead. You know, we were talking about the 188 yards of offense that Tracy Ham had in the first half and you know Nevada Reno's total offense in the first half was just 196 yards so let's see what uh, Mr. Ham has in store for us here to begin the second half Ham keeps it pitches it outside that's Ricky Harris and Harris has good running room and finally knocked out of bounds at the 37 yard line Ken Caleb comes over and knocks him out of bounds but that'll be close to a first down and I believe he may in fact have gotten a first down here's another look at it Here's the pitch outside to Harris. Harris, again, good moves, good strong running, and gets out of bounds. We've seen that sign over there that says ham sandwich over there, but uh, it's uh, kind of interesting that uh, the... Have you heard about the Hogs, H-A-W-G-S, Chuck? That's that offensive line at Georgia Southern, as they like to be called. That's first right. and ten, they got the first down. Ham again keeps it again. He pitches it outside to Ricky Harris. Same play, and this time Harris breaks it big all the way down to the Reno 40-yard line. Kent Donathan finally drags him down or else he was gone. Ricky Harris with the same play that they ran on the play before. Lazovich is out this time now, and Dwayne Norfleet is in in his place, and Lazovich had a good first half, so if he is out of action for a while, that could uh, make a big difference to the Reno defense. And there you see Harris, just great effort on his part. Down to the 41-yard line for another first down for Georgia Southern as they continue to move the football without a whole lot of diffi difficulty against the Wolfpack defense. Gerald Harris, the setback, 
The football is on the ground, but bounces back up to Ham, and he pitches it out to Harris, and Harris goes to the 30. Now there is a play that I know they did not design, and I should say that was Keith Jeter that had the the uh, pitch out, but still, what a great play and the presence of mind of Tracy Ham. There you see it again. Chuck, they have done this so much, it almost has gotten to be a design play. I know, I know it's not, but uh, they keep their, their cool so well in situations like that. They do it on pitch outs every once in a while, and it's bounced right back up into their hands for touchdowns. It's just an incredible, incredible um, play. Well, with that, it's another first down, and now Nevada Reno wants to call timeout and call the defense over, and we'll be back. 24 to 10, Eagles. There you see it, Georgia Southern 24, Nevada Reno 10. First and 10 at the 29-yard line of the Wolfpack. The Eagles on the march. Ham with a snap and gives it to Ricky Harris, and Harris on the trap play takes it down to the 22-yard line. Henry Rowling, who was all over the field in the first half of the Wolfpack, making the stop, but not before Harris gets a big gain down close to the 22. We'll call it the 23. Don't these kind guys play? To tell from here. <laughs> Don't these guys play exciting, fun football? And we're proud to bring it to you on the Lewis Broadcasting Sports Network. We appreciate you joining us this afternoon. Georgia Southern looking for more. They lead it by 14, 12:57 to go in the third period. Ham has him up, and he's got Gerald Harris behind him. Ham keeps it. He's got a man to pitch out to if he wants to. He's caught by the jersey and dragged down. Good defensive play by Jeff Davis. Jeff Davis out of Reno. He's got that name, but you know you'd think he'd be somewhere out of the deep out south. Of the south. Out of Reno, Nevada, 6'5", 235. He's a junior, and a great play there to hang on to Tracy Ham. And I'm, I'm assuming here that when you're playing defense against this gentleman, any part that you can grab hold of and hang on to, you're happy for it. And, and uh, Tracy, in earlier years, Chuck might have tried to pitch that out and uh, done something bad, but uh, he had the presence of mind to hold on to it that time. Third down and four now for the Eagles. Ham keeps it, and he's swarmed under. That'll be a loss of about a yard, and that'll bring up fourth down and five. So on will come Tim Foley for the field goal attempt. Jeff Davis again. Here you watch the replay. And Ham just couldn't get started on this one. And again, that number 43, Henry Rowling, also in there. And we now have a final in on the other playoff game in Arkansas State. 24 to 10 over Eastern Kentucky. So Arkansas State into the Diamond Bowl in Tacoma next week. Here comes Foley for a 40-yard field goal effort. There's the snap, and he got enough leg into it. It is should be good. Way back there, and it is good. Three more points for Georgia Southern. 27 to 10. They lead it by 17, and we'll be back. Back at Mackey Stadium in Reno, Nevada. Chuck Dowdle, Bill Edwards, Dave Williams with you. It is 27 to 10. Georgia Southern trying to advance into the finals of the 1AA championship game. Rob Witt, good kickoff down to the five-yard line. And swarmed under at the 20-yard line. That is number five. That is Kevin Claiborne. So Claiborne gets it back out to the 20. And now down by, now down by 17 points as a result of that scoring drive. Seven plays and 50 yards with a 228 elapsed time. Foley with a field goal, and Georgia Southern leads it by 17 points. 27 to 10, 11 28 to play in the third period. Beavers and his offense has not been able to get a lot going here in this contest. They had the one good drive in the first half, and just before intermission, they got the field goal. This is Lucius Floyd, and Floyd gets about five yards. Good tackle down there on the ground by Brad Bowen. Came Brad in low. Bo Brad Bowen out of Plantation, Florida. He, one of those guys that Irk got out of deep South Florida. Calvin Sales leaves the contest limping. We've had some great players from Florida, several from Jacksonville in recent years, Chuck, that have just done a great job for us. State of Florida also very rich for good athletes, good high school athletes, but I'll tell you what, for my money, Georgia. Mm -hmm. They can really turn them out. Here comes Foger now, cutting outside and trying to get some running room, looking for a block. He got to the 30, and I believe that's all he needed for the first down. Brad Bowen, out of plantation, as I just said, over to make the stop, so another first down for Nevada Reno. Good angle on this. Finally, good defense by Georgia Southern, but uh, boy, they had, the, they had the good angle to get that first down. 
I've been a bit surprised at the fact that Nevada Reno has not been able to establish a lot of momentum offensively because certainly coming into this contest their record was such that you thought they would and Georgia Southern's defense although it played better in recent weeks it had some problems here goes Foger looking for a block good stiff arm and he gets out of bounds after about an eight maybe nine yards pickup Chavez Foger out of Las Vegas Bowen again sideline to sideline now makes the stop made most of that on his own didn't he Chuck just got outside there good speed good blocking along the front line was a good stiff arm too. Yeah, and Brad Bowen finally running him out of bounds, but not before he picked up eight yards. So second down, we'll call it about a yard and a half to go for the first down. Beavers gives it to Fo no, I'm sorry, that's Lucius Floyd, and Floyd drops the football, and there are all kinds of white jerseys jumping around, and the referee says, yes, indeed, Georgia Southern has recovered. So Floyd dropped it, and it looks like Chris Aiken, perhaps. Chris Aiken got that football, I do believe. Chris Aiken, number 18, is Johnny on the spot to recover. And Irk Russell's Eagles are back in business at the 40-yard line. No, I think somebody underneath Chris Aiken got that. Okay, and that was, um, let's see. Edward Eaves. Edward Eaves. Yeah, Edward Eaves with the recovery. I'm sure Chris was helping him. Oh, yeah, Chris was right there. <laughs> Always around the football, Chuck. A big turnover, in fact, the first turnover of the afternoon, and Georgia Southern now back on offense. Ham keeps it, good protection. Now he has to scramble and gets tripped up and falls forward for a couple down to the 38. Bill Bonsell was able to get a hand out and just trip Tracy up as he was getting back to the line of scrimmage. I thought momentarily as he approached the line that he might uh, cut loose with it. Looked like he was looking for somebody downfield. Like he may have had a yard or two there more, but uh, Bonsall was uh, able to get that hand out and get him down. I want to say hello to Fred Pierce back in Savannah, who I know is uh, the general manager of your station back there. and is, Unfortunately, could not make the trip out. He's a big Georgia Southern booster, though, and I know he's watching and is happy right now with what he's seeing, which is Tracy Ham <laughs> keeping the football and doing what he does best, and that is making tacklers miss. Dean Hodges finally gets him, but not before Tracy Ham gets it all the way down to the 16-yard line of the Wolfpack. And we had talked about, as you watch it again, Chuck, here, watch those just incredible moves in his feet as he dances back inside, following his blockers beautifully. Monty Sharp throwing a good block downfield. Just an incredible job. And the Hogs that we were telling you about, the linemen, they have got new T-shirts that they came out with this week, and it said, without Hogs, there can be no ham. <laughs> I think that's about as accurate as you can get. <laughs> and there's a timeout on the field. Georgia Southern has taken a brief timeout. Let's uh, mention those hogs when we come back. But uh, right now it is 27 to 10 Georgia Southern, and we'll be back. And it grows in well, the zonies have been very quiet <laughs> uh, in this Probably since the first quarter, I guess since that opening drive, they haven't had a whole lot to cheer about, and Georgia Southern just continues to march it right at them. And again, that's the case. First and 10 for the Eagles, and Tracy Ham knocking on the door again there at the 17-yard line. And it's Gerald Harris right up the middle. He's got a big hole, and he goes in for a touchdown. Gerald Harris right up the middle. Again, <laughs> Georgia <laughs> Southern has found something in the middle of that Nevada Reno defense. <laughs> And Harris was a touchdown, and the Eagles have six more to make it 33 to 10. Again, watch Harris. Explosive. He follows his blockers well. Look how he cuts back and follows that blocking and just gets around another one, does it on his own. And here come the megaphones from the zonies. <laughs> they throw at him, and he does his traditional little kneel there to kneel down and pray and give thanks after that touchdown. Tim Foley on for the point after. And with that, let's see if they get the snap right. They've had no problem with it all afternoon. And it is good, and it is 34 to 10 now as Georgia Southern widens that lead to 24 points, and we'll be back. Nevada Reno, the nation's number one ranked and unbeaten team, I might add, with a 19-game winning streak here at home. Short kickoff, it's taken by James Witherspoon, and Witherspoon returns it out to about the 29, maybe the 30-yard line. Over on the stop was Jeff Banks, number 90, is the special teams from Georgia Southern, which uh, much maligned and doing a good job this afternoon on those kickoffs. They have really come through, and as we mentioned earlier, Chuck, that's something that's just been worked on tremendously. As you watch the touchdown again, Gerald Harris following his blockers, going right on in there and moving through. 
and into the end zone for a shower of megaphones from the Zonies. Scoring drive I'm sure was he didn't mind it. <laughs> three plays, 40 yards, took 59 seconds. So now Eric Beaver's definitely going to have to go to the air. He's down by 24 points. Reverses his field. They tried this play earlier oh. and had some success with it. This time it just does not work at all. Number 37, that is Everett Sharp, just had that play read from the snap of the ball. Everett Sharp, a freshman from Lions, has come in here and done very, very well, Chuck. He's, uh, he's been in uh, play a lot of times uh, in, the, in the recent weeks, as has Taz Dixon. We don't see Taz in right now, but he got in on the series a little bit earlier. Well, Beavers that time thought he had Foger over there, but Sharp just read it all the way, came up and made the good, strong defensive play. Second down and 10. Here comes Beavers rolling to the side. And he fires it out, almost intercepted, but a great catch. Wasn't that? Beautiful a... reception oh. by Brian Calder right on the sideline and a great throw by Beavers. Again, Everett Sharp was playing the football that time, going for the interception, Chuck. And watch this beautiful pass. How does he do that? I got to learn how to do that. Maybe a future for you in this game if you can learn how to do it. Obviously, yeah. that's, a, that's just a great throw. I think, um, I think I'll leave the broadcasting business to become a professional athlete. What do you think? I always <laughs> see those athletes saying they're going to become broadcasters. Maybe a little late for that. Oh. <laughs> well, I hate to be the one to break that to you. Oh, Falcons but wouldn't take me, huh? First, well, maybe they'd take you, but it's first down and 10 <laughs> at the 42-yard line. Here's Beavers, fires it, and Logan had it momentarily. He was bobbling it, and then uh, during the time that the ball was being bobbled, Flint Matthews and Everett Sharp closed quickly, and he had no chance to recover. So it's incomplete, and it'll be second and 10. That was excellent coverage there because he did have this football just for a second. Never could quite find the handle, could he? Uh, when you're getting banged around <laughs> like that, it makes it a little bit difficult. I don't think you realize you're on the football field at that time. Second down and 10, and you notice now Nevada Reno going to the air on almost every snap of the ball as time becomes a factor for them here. 8.48 to play in the third. They're down by 24 points. Here's Beavers whipping it out to Logan, and Logan is knocked out of bounds. I believe he may have the first down. Nay Young knocked him out of bounds, but Logan with a nice reception got past the marker mm. that he needed for the first down. He's close. He's right on it, I believe. Well, I may have given him too much credit too soon. They're going to take a good, close, hard look at it. Yeah, the official wants to measure, but there you see how close he was right there at it. <laughs> they were going to bring the chains out to measure and suddenly realizing that the ball was not uh, in the middle of the field. Yeah, He's got it. Down. Just by the nose of the football, but that's good enough. First down for the Wolfpack as they move into Georgia Southern Territory. They have been there a precious few times this afternoon. As the Eagles have just had the better of this from the very outset. They got the opening field goal to lead three to nothing. And from there on in, it's been pretty much a piece of cake. They led 17 to nothing before Nevada Reno ever scored. Here's Beavers again looking to the air, and this time he's got Foger, and Foger's got good yardage down inside the 40 to about the 37-yard line. That'll be close to another first down. Robert Underwood and Everett Sharp again combining for the tackle. Underwood, defensive anchor, you know, he's got a very big heart. He's just a, one of those kind of kids that's just always around the football. And, you know, scouts a lot of times, they look at size and speed, but you can't always look under that jersey. And there's a kid that really is... Uh, has shown great ability and great heart to play the game. Beavers again looking to throw on a second and short. He's got a free throw, and he fires it over the middle, and that is number 46, Scott Treaty, and Treaty has a first down and more down to the 24-yard line. Uh, I'll bring it back. I'm sorry. Make it the 26-yard line. Another first down, and, of course, there he goes right down the middle. Chuck, they're going to have to score in a hurry as well, and it looks like they're, they're, on, their, they're on their way for a good drive here because they can't afford to keep that ball on the ground and eat up the clock. Their time is just not in their favor. Clock is ticking with 7.47 to play, and Beavers now with a first and 10 at the Georgia Southern 26-yard line. Again, rolling to the right, firing it out and incomplete. He was trying to go to Logan, and Logan was well covered over there. James Wildman, Wildman Carter, the guy that... Uh, Everybody knows a lot about, was doing a good job on defense that time. Wild Man is a good nickname for him because he just goes crazy out there. He'll, he'll do anything. He'll be, when he's on the sidelines, Zerk says he pesters him to death. Let me in, coach. Can I carry the football? Can I do anything? Can I get you a glass of water? I mean, it's unbelievable. He's out of Valdosta, Georgia, and there's been one or two good football players come out of that area. There's Coach, coach Russell. Russell, 6 and 0 in NCAA playoff activity and going for his seventh today. And right now with a 24-point lead, second down for Reno. 
And there's the pass to Floyd, and Floyd is very close to the first down, down near the 15-yard line of Georgia he Southern. They may have it, but there's a flag down there, and I don't know if somebody late hit or what. Robert Underwood over on the stop, but let's wait, and we'll get the call. Are they calling personal foul? Uh, face mask. Face mask call. Well, that'll cost him some more yardage, and he's not out of cause. Against Brad Bowen. One of those inadvertent face masks. I'm glad they changed that rule a few years ago, Chuck, where you just got uh, just grabbed a little bit of it, you know, accidentally. It used to be just a 15-yard penalty straight up. If you're dealing with a player like Tracy Ham again, <laughs> you're probably grabbing all over the place. Uh, <laughs> you don't grab it anything. That time, Lucius Floyd was victimized, but now a first down and 10 situation. They could get another first down, but it would have to be inside the two-yard line. Beavers wants to keep it in the air and does so. And he's got Calvin Sales, and Sales is out of bounds. <laughs> I think he'll he's prob got probably have a first down. I think he's got that first down you were talking about. Brad Bowen got him out of bounds, but not before he got that first down. Beautiful pass. Boy, has this been a well-executed drive. Uh, right there, right about the two-yard line. Let's see if the yeah, the official is going to bring the chain across the field to take a look at it. Bowen was extremely fortunate to make that play, too, Chuck. At any rate, regardless, uh, it will be very short yardage, a very short yardage situation mm -hmm. for Nevada Reno. So they'll bring them over and take a look at it, a good close look. Calvin Sales is now out of the contest, and uh, in his place, 86 Norm Kraft comes in, and they'll go to a too tight end alignment. So perhaps we'll see our first running attempt of yeah. this drive. They've Looks been keeping the ball in the air the entire way. <laughs> Looks like about a half foot short, Chuck, as a signal to us up here. Uh, you know, Georgia Southern has um, has been known as a comeback team. Last year, you know, in the national championship, that had to be the greatest comeback since Chrysler Corporation, I think. Uh, certainly one of the best football games I've ever seen. And to this day, a 44-42 score will long live in my mind, and I'm sure in the minds of all S southeastern football fans, particularly those in Furman, too. Uh, right. you know, Furman played <laughs> such a great football Didn't game. Didn't they, though? But uh, so Southern has got a battle against the same syndrome of, uh, you know, they get a big lead and they do have a tendency to get lackadaisical. Well, let's see now. It's a suck it down and just very short yardage. And that is Lucius Floyd, and he is tripped up. Number 36, Brad Bowen, did a good job penetrating and got Floyd to fall just shy of the goal line. They'll mark it at the one, but it should be enough for a first down. He's got his first down, I'm sure. Well, this will be interesting now. Nevada Reno will have four downs inside the... No. Oh, no, they're going to say, <laughs> say short, huh? Yeah. I'll be darned. I didn't see the signal, and sure enough, they say still about an inch away. And they didn't measure it. Third down and very short yardage. Here goes Floyd again. He's got yeah. a blocker and into the end zone. Touchdown. So Nevada Reno on the scoreboard here in the second half. 34 to 16. They'll try to pull within 17 points with the extra point. But Lucius Floyd getting his first touchdown of the afternoon. And that was just a great drive all the way. Reno keeping the ball in the air throughout the entire drive until right at the end there where they went to the ground twice and they get it in with Lucius Floyd. Here you go with the replays. You watch it from the end zone and he just gets in there and bowls his way through. And he had Tom Eaton out in front of him doing a good job blocking and Eaton at 6'4 and 245. He can do a good job for you. It takes <laughs> up a lot can, of space. I think we can score on that. And Dejas drills the extra point. It is 34 to 17. Southern still with a lead. And we'll be back with a kickoff right after this. Well, I guess we'll stay here. <laughs> we will stay here. 627 to play in the third quarter. Now the crowd getting into it a bit. Just as they did last time, the Zonies not only have come to life again, but so has the rest of this crowd. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us on the Lewis Sports Broadcasting Network today. We appreciate all the stations around Georgia. We hope you're enjoying the ball game. Let the stations know if you, um, if you appreciate it and, and have enjoyed this broadcast. Thanks to all the guys at Western Productions, too, Chuck, for providing the camera coverage for us and technicians in the truck and all. Absolutely necessary, aren't they? Yeah. Yes, they are. Otherwise, you folks wouldn't be seeing this. We'd be talking to ourselves out here. 
So Zendejas now will tee it up at the 35-yard line. He had a bit of a problem at the opening kickoff in this contest. He had to try it three times before he finally got it right. Kept kicking it out of bounds. He was obviously trying to kick it short. And let's see what he does here. That's Ricky Harris back at the eight-yard line. And here comes Harris right up through the middle. Good blocking and a good return. Great return by Ricky Harris out to the 38-yard line. He gets Mike in. Brown finally makes the stop on him, but not before he got good yardage all the way out to the they'll mark it just shy of the 38-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for Georgia Southern at, uh, we'll call it the 37. Let me check. What, what's the way he goes through the traffic here? He still just carries people with him. You know, we were talking earlier about uh, UNLV, the nation's number one basketball team, will be in town here tonight to take on the Vatorino's basketball team. So this is a big day sports-wise for this community. <laughs> Isn't it, though? All they got to do is walk next door. Now the crowd trying to help out their defense. And there's the handoff to Gerald Harris. And Gerald Harris out over the 45-yard line to about the 46. That'll be a gain of about eight yards. And that'll bring up a second and two. Brian Kasky coming in from his strong safety position to make the stop. There you see the scoring drive for Nevada Reno. 11 plays, 70 yards. The time, not much, 244. We said that that was a factor. That's why they were keeping that ball in the air. And Lucius Floyd getting the touchdown, a two-yard run. 34 to 17, Georgia Southern has led from the opening moments of this game. Now Ham on a play action, flips it out on the side. That is to Ricky Harris, and Harris gets it into Wolfpack territory down to the 46-yard line. Knocked out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. 5.39 to play in the third period. Kent Donathan, Brian Kasky in on the coverage. They move the chains up and another Georgia Southern first down. The Eagles continue to move the football without much problem. Now early in the game and again just a few minutes ago on a touchdown for Georgia Southern. We've seen them attack the middle of that Wolfpack defense. That was not the case that time, but they've had an awful lot of success going right up the gut. First and ten. Ham with a handoff to Gerald Harris, and as I said, right up the middle, down to the 35-yard line. They continue to chew up big chunks of yardage when they go right up the middle. Robert Floyd, along with Dwayne Norfleet, making the stop. Norfleet out of Oakland, California, and Floyd out of Long Beach, California. So again, that California recruiting paying off for Nevada Reno. Good athletes out of that area. One of those officials had to get out of the way of that one real quick, or Gerald Harris was going to run over him. Another first down for Georgia Southern. Now at the 35-yard line. The Eagles on the march again. The Hambone offense doing the job. They hand it to Gerald Harris. This time he's tripped up after a gain of about four or five yards. And you're getting to that point when they hold him to four or five, you want to say, what great defense. <laughs> Don Sharon is the man who played the play correctly. Out of Sunnyvale, California. Very, very short game. We'll call it three-yard pickup. And bring up a second and seven. There's a sellout crowd, as you might uh, well have anticipated from this uh, loving community here at Mackey Stadium this afternoon, but that doesn't even include a lot of folks who are standing on building tops and over on the embankments and anywhere they can get a view of this action. Here's Harris again, and he's knocked out of bounds, but not before he drops the football, and the Wolfpack comes up with it. Gerald Harris trying to get outside, and he was bumped. He dropped the football. And the Wolfpack has it. Here we go. I never saw him fumble the football, Chuck, but uh, obviously he did. His foot was out of bounds. Joe Peterson is the man who recovered the fumble. Dwayne Norfleet made the hit and caused the fumble. And so the turnover goes to the Wolfpack. That's the first time that Georgia Southern has turned the football over this afternoon. They lead it 34 to 17, 413 to play in the third period. But now Eric Beavers with an opportunity to get some more points on the board. Here's Foger. Foger's pushed back deep and now fighting to get back to the line of scrimmage and get just a couple of yards. Brad Bowen made a good play on defense, and now a flag comes in, and we may have another face masking call. Yeah, I think they are. That will be the call, so that'll be another first down for Nevada Reno. Thomas Porter is being pointed to as the guilty party, and Par Porter was just trying to I don't know help why. out over there because yeah. Floyd looked like he was trying to stagger forward just to get a couple of additional yards. That'll move it out to the 47-yard line now. First and 10 for the Wolfpack. This could be a big turnaround here, Chuck. 
They said earlier that they needed to get something going on that drive before they did. They were able to move it down the field in a short amount of time, 244. They got seven points out of it. They got a Georgia Southern turnover. And now they're back on the move again. And here's the pass to Logan. Logan into Georgia Southern territory, down to the 44-yard line. That'll be near, a ver very near another first down. They move it back to the 45, and it'll leave them just about a yard and a half short. But that'll bring up second and a yard and a half for the Wolfpack. Beaver's an excellent thrower. You can see why they like this young fellow so much. He, he's got a good arm, and he's excellent at throwing on the rollout. Now, and he's not seen him throw much straight drop back. But boy, can he roll out and fire the football. Very dangerous. There goes again. Trying to go again to Logan. This time it's incomplete. So it'll be third and a yard and a half. And basically, when you've got that second and very short yardage, it's sort of a free down. Because you figure you're going to come back. You can get the yard and a half... Uh, on one, if not two plays, if you need to go for it on fourth down. So Beavers uh, tried to eat up a little extra yardage that time, and it was incomplete. Trying to go to Logan over on the far sideline. That's usually a very good call, Chuck. It catches a lot of defenses off guard. Third down and a yard and a half. Let's see what Eric Beavers has designed for the Georgia Southern defense this time. He gives it to Lucius Floyd. Floyd bounces it outside, cuts back inside. He's got yardage, big yardage, in fact. Finally wrestled down by Chris Aiken, but not before he gets it to the 26-yard line. Great run by Lucius Floyd. He bounced it outside. He saw the hole, cut back inside, and had the big game. They could cut the lead to 10 points here if they could get on in, and there you go as he is picking up some nice yardage, just following his blockers well, and good, strong running there, Chuck. Chris Aiken doing all he could to hang on and bulldog him down. <laughs> It's only good 55 do. to play in the third quarter, and again, Nevada Reno on to march. First and 10 at the 26 yard line. Again, Beavers rolls out. The ball is deflected, but still, Floyd makes the reception. It is a short gain, only about two yards. And Chris Aiken again on the coverage. Chris Aiken all over that defensive backfield for the Eagles. Chris has been a splendid player for Georgia Southern, a junior college transfer out of North Carolina a couple of years ago, and he has really been a great addition to this defense. So Eric Russell's defensive troops now are going to have to get their backs to the wall here and see what they can't do to stop this Nevada Reno offensive threat because they've already put seven on the board this quarter. Threatening once again. They're at the 24 of the Eagles. A second down and eight. Beavers drops straight. He's got a receiver. The ball is batted down. Great defensive play by Terry Young. Young was right Johnny on the spot out of Savannah. They were trying to hit Brian Calder, who had a step. Yes, he but did. Young made the great move on the football. Look at this. Great defensive effort. That was six if he wasn't there, Chuck. So that'll bring up third down now in about eight. Still eight yards to go. If Southern can hold him to a field goal here, I think they feel a bit they were lucky. I believe they'd feel luckier if they get a turnover. Yeah, <laughs> oh, sure. They'd really love to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. On the third and eight. Again, Beaver's dropping to throw. He fires it over the middle. He's got a receiver. That is Calder. And Calder darn near broke the tackle and got into the end zone. He's at the 10. That'll be another first down for Nevada Reno and the Wolfpack now threatening. Calder goes out. Calvin Sales comes in. And we know what kind of receiver Calvin Sales is. He's already made one fine reception this afternoon for six. First and 10 now, Wolf back at the 10. Beavers drops straight. His protection finally breaks down. He scrambles up the middle and gets it down to the six yard line. That looked a little bit like, uh, like he's been watching Tracy Ham on the sideline there. Kenny Butler finally tripped him up. Just a touch, trying that kind of a quarterback draw when he didn't find anybody to throw it to. Good thinking by Beavers, watching. Second down now and about seven yards to go for the first down. About seven and a half to go for the touchdown. Again to the air and touchdown, Calvin Sale. Brad Bowen was there, but one step too late. And a great throw, though, by Beaver. Oh. He put the football right where he had to put it, 
and six more points for the Wolfpack, and suddenly they're back in this thing. It is 34-23, and an extra point here will cut it to a 10-point lead for the Eagles. 14-point turnaround. They've got to have the momentum now, Chuck. Look at this pass. This is just beautiful. Concentration, unbelievable, because Bowen looked like he had broken that one up. So Zendejas on for the extra point attempt, and of course, if he nails this through, we are talking about a 10-point game in anybody's football game now. What looked like a piece of cake for Georgia Southern a while ago is now a 34-24 game. As Nevada Reno is climbed back into this very quickly here. They got seven, they got a turnover, and they got seven more. Well, they say they got a turnover. And now listen to this crowd here at Mackey Stadium. They're back to life, that's for sure. There's 58 seconds to play in the third period. Thank you all for joining us on the Lewis Sports Broadcasting Network. Georgia Southern up 34-24. But, uh, ooh. <laughs> we thought we'd see that offense a little earlier, Chuck, but it's finally come out of the woodwork, hasn't it? Well, we were talking all along about it. We wondered where it was. And it had seemed dormant for much of the afternoon, but now has come to life here in the last seven minutes of the third period. Two beautifully executed drives, no doubt about it. Zendejas tees it up at the 35. Ricky Harris is deep for the Eagles. High and short at the 13. He's got the wall. He breaks through and comes all the way out to the 33-yard line. We'll make it at the 34. Henry Rowling. Henry Rowling and Robert Ford in on the stop on the special teams. Here we go as you watch Ricky Harris come straight up the middle there and get that good yardage. Attendance here today at Mackey Stadium, 15,100. The stadium capacity is 14,000, so they've stuffed folks wherever they could find a place to put them today. And now a critical drive for Georgia Southern. 53 seconds to play in the third period. They need to reestablish some sort of offensive momentum. Ham hands it to Gerald Harris, and he goes nowhere. Maybe a yard. Kent Donathan, number 57, 6 feet, 215 pounds, out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Makes a stop. And now that Wolfpack defense really getting fired up. That last scoring drive, as you watch the clock tick down there inside almost 30 seconds now to go in the third quarter, that last scoring drive went 69 yards for the Wolfpack in eight plays, three minutes and 15 seconds. We said they were going to have to score quickly and score often, Chuck, and that's what they've done so far. Second down and nine, we'll call it. Ham with the audible at the line of scrimmage, and now Harris drops back, and it was a busted play. Uh, Tracy turned to hand the football off, and nobody was home. And with that, Dean Hodges and Kent Donathan just stepped in and slammed him down, so it'll bring up a third down, a loss of about a half yard, and we'll call it third down and ten. And there's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout because the end of the third quarter and the score. Georgia Southern 34, Nevada Reno 24. Folks, stay with us. We've got a great one. It's with you, it is 34 to 24. Georgia Southern with a 10-point lead, but we remind you that that 10-point lead was a 24-point lead, what seems like just 10 minutes ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gee. And Southern now with a third down and 10-yard opportunity at their own 35-yard line. And Tracy Ham uh, on that last play looked like he wanted to hand it off. He called the audible. You saw Ricky Harris move, and then when he mm -hmm. turned, it was just nobody home, and uh, wisely he covered the football and went down in a hurry. Now, this is crucial here, Chuck. That's the first really big play that Southern has faced since back in the first period. Ham drops the throw. Looks downfield, and it is complete. Tony Belzer has the reception. A big first down for Georgia Southern. They keep possession. The chains move. And Georgia Southern with an opportunity now to get something going. Bernard Ellison was in on the coverage. Watch Here's Tracy. Ham. When his back's against the wall, that's when he's the most dangerous right to Tony Belzer, who had run a beautiful pattern again, gotten right between those two defenders. Can't say enough about that catch Belzer made because uh, Ellison was right on his back when he caught the football. First and ten, now Georgia Southern out at the 48-yard line. They hand it to Gerald Harris, and he is stacked up in the middle. No, I guess Tracy kept the football, didn't he? Jeff Davis got him. And there's a four-yard loss back to the 45-yard line, 46-yard line. Jeff Davis 
as you said, came storming through there. Now they're starting to really pay close attention to what Tracy Ham's doing with the football. Monty Sharp coming in for Delano Little. That uh, could indicate um, a pass to Monty. Split wide to the right. Well, we will watch for that. He is number one. And Ham does roll that way. Looks downfield and incomplete. And you're right, he was going for Monty Sharp. Monty fell just down. out of his reach. I think he fell down on the route or he ran the wrong way. Joe Peterson there to defend. Watch it again. Just out of his reach, and that'll bring up now a third down and 12. Well, 13, 13 is what they are calling it, so that's what we will call it. This is the second big third down play in this drive for Georgia Southern. They lead it 34 to 24. Now the crowd starting to cheer that Wolfpack defense. Ham drops, avoids the rush, fakes, and now fires downfield, and it is caught. Number 21, Tony Belzer doing a great job. He saw his quarterback in trouble. He comes back toward him for help. That's a mark of a very mature and a very good pass receiver. Watch, Tracy is always so conscious of where that line of scrimmage is too, Chuck. You think maybe he's going across it or something much. He stops and then pumps and fires again. And Belzer had come back, as you said, to get that pass. So another big first down. And again, another big third down conversion. First and 10 now. Georgia Southern on the march. They are at the 38-yard line. Here's Harris. He breaks through. He's got big yardage down inside the 30-yard line, down to the 29. Henry Rowling and Ken Caleb combining to make the stop, but Harris gets about eight, maybe nine yards. And so Georgia Southern will have second and short yardage. Gerald Harris is such a powerful runner. Second down and about two. Comes one of those free downs you were talking about, Chuck. Well, let's see if he does something like that. This is an opportunity to throw in the end zone if you want, but he doesn't. He hands it right to Gerald Harris, and up the middle goes Harris, and the big guy out of Swainsboro gets another uh, good break and yardage and down to the 22-yard line. So another first down for Georgia Southern, and the drive continues. Caleb out of Long Beach having to make the stop, and he's got to be pretty tired of seeing Mr. Harris come at him about right now. <laughs> when you're 5'11 and 175, and you've got this 200-pound fellow running at you with the football all the time, it gets to be monotonous in the afternoon. 12.57, you have to play in the fourth quarter. Southern up by 10, and here goes Harris again, and look at him drive forward. The football's on the ground, and the Wolfpack has it. Henry Rowling knocked it loose. Dean Hodges recovered. Rowling has had a great afternoon, and that time as Harris was just trying to strain for that extra yardage, he reached in there and pulled the football free, and Dean Hodges fell on it. Well, it's time for the defense to get after it now, Chuck. Well, there you see the football coming loose. There she goes. Nothing there but blue jerseys. So the second big turnover here in the second half for Nevada Reno, they turned it over once, but then Georgia Southern has reciprocated twice here. Christmas a little early. About two weeks, I believe. First and 10 now for the Wolfpack. Beavers, who's been having a, an excellent second half in the air, and this time he hands it right up the middle, and nobody's home for Georgia Southern. That was Chavez Foger, who goes right up the middle, and Brad Bowen, finally the safety, had to make the stop, or otherwise it was gone for Foger. Huge hole. That'll be another first down for the Wolf Pack, and they'll move it out to the 34-yard line. Here comes Brad Bowen. If he hadn't made that little trip there, he had at least 10 more yards. Foger going into the third quarter only had, or into the final quarter, I should say, only had 27 yards rushing, but he has certainly padded that here in the fourth. Beavers now wants to go to the air. He flips it out to the sideline, and Lucius Floyd, did he catch it? Yes, he yes. did. Floyd with the reception. That'll be good for seven more yards. And move it out to the 41. Here you go. Watch it again as he rolls out to his left. You're right, Chuck. He's just a great rollout quarterback. The reception and Thomas Porter up quickly to run him out of bounds, but big yardage on the play. 
Lost it momentarily, and there you see some Wolfpack fans as they're really getting into it now. Their team is down by 24, has suddenly gotten back into this contest, now down by 10, and that'll be very close to the first down as Foger just kind of moves that defensive line of the Eagles out near the 45-yard line. Virtually everybody <laughs> on that Georgia Southern defensive front, and I mean everybody. We're talking about he guys got it. like Donnie Allen and Edward Eves. It's a first down, another first down for the Wolfpack. And they continue to march it forward. Time now becoming somewhat of a factor. 24 to 34. Or the 34 to 24, 10-point lead for the Eagles, no matter how you want to say it. But 12 minutes left to play. Why is it, Bill, that these Georgia Southern Eagles always get involved in these kind of things? Huh? I don't know, but I'd like to have an investigation and clear it up. Intercepted. Picked off by Danny, Danny Durham. Durham. And Durham with a great return. He's going to get knocked out of bounds at the 27-yard line. That's exactly the what The ball was deflected by Flint Matthews and picked off by Durham. Beavers finally drove him out of bounds, and he was the last man to stop him. And that exa might be exactly what, um, what Georgia Southern needed here. Well, Georgia Southern comes up with a big defensive play. They lead by 10, and we'll be back. Big defensive play by Danny Durham, and you kept wondering all along when this was going to happen if Beavers kept putting the ball up. And Flint Matthews was the guy that tipped it, and Danny Durham, who has come up with some big interceptions before, may have just come up with the biggest ever, and one of his best returns, too. He's also looks like a halfback. He may try out for the backfield, Chuck. Georgia Southern in business now at the Wolfpack 26, and Harris up the middle. This time he's holding on tight to that football. Dwayne Norfleet making the stop on him. Georgia Southern looking for that big defensive turnover that they'd been hoping for. They got one earlier. Uh, then they had had their offense give the ball away twice. But that time they come up with it, and now their offense back in business looking for more points. They lead it by 10. Already we have told you Arkansas State is in the Diamond Bowl in Tacoma next weekend. And, of course, the winner of this contest will be there also. Georgia Southern trying to do the seemingly impossible, and that is in such a young program and to win the Division title twice. There's Gerald Harris again pounding the football down to the 15-yard line. That'll be enough for another Georgia Southern first down. You don't lose confidence in a guy that has been your bread and butter man all this time, even though he's uh, fumbled the football the last couple of times on these possessions, but he's done a great job here. And, of course, right now, the key thing for Georgia Southern, keep that clock moving. That's exactly what they're doing right now, 11 minutes to play. It has been a beautiful afternoon here this afternoon at Mackey Stadium. We had thought perhaps the weather would be cold. It has not been. It's been a great day for football. In the low 40s, there's Ricky Harris and Harris on the trap play, and they get it down close to the 10. Another good game. Pick up of about five. Norfleet again comes over to make the stop. Flag on the play here, Chuck. I don't know what it was. Holding against Southern. Well, we've seen that a couple of times this afternoon, and I know... As you said, if he could have some, Irk would have that gray hair. That yeah. That gift to coach him. <laughs> Wasn't that the truth? So they set him back to the 25-yard line, where it will now be a first down and 20, 20 to go. Yeah. In order to get the first down, they need to get down to the 6-yard line of Nevada, Reno. That seems like such a long way when you look at it, doesn't it? Shadows starting to fall across Mackey Stadium now, and Georgia Southern looking to put this thing away. Tracy Ham keeps it that time and gets knocked down by Dean Hodges after a short game. That was a busted play, I believe. He was trying to hand it to, to Gerald, who never took the football. And Tracy did a good job just hanging on to it, or he could have put it on the ground again. That will often happen in those circumstances. You know, when you run a, any type of an option attack, you, you run into a situation where it's always high risk and as you said earlier georgia southern had had great success with having footballs bounce for them this year and you got to have a few of those if you're going to be champions this time he does give it to harris harris breaks a tackle he's got all kinds of running room down inside the five first down georgia southern at the four yard line robert floyd finally got to him or else it'd been six more points for southern here comes Jarrett. watch him right up the middle Holds onto that football with both hands. Finally puts it away there. And one man was there to finally trip him up. 
and Gerald Harris just thanks Gerald Larry Boone and James Carter doing a good job springing him open now ham keeps it on the quarterback keeper right up the middle gets another couple of yards Bill Bonsell on the on the stop there for <coughs> Nevada Reno as you watch it from the end zone again just Tracy just bowling his way down there not risking a handoff here because they do need a touchdown Chuck a field goal is not uh, not desirable at this point that would only put them up by 13 which and the way of course would mean yeah, two touchdowns know. by mm -hmm. Nevada Reno would still beat you yep they got the big guys in the backfield now in Boone and Carter and here goes Harris and he's into the end zone touchdown Georgia Southern There's some breathing room for the Eagles. Irk Russell, wait. <laughs> Irk's run out on the football field a bit there, and I don't blame him. He's a little bit excited. Irk doesn't show a whole lot of emotion, but boy, when he does, you know that he's he's fired up. And there goes Gerald just bulling his way into the end zone the way he has for the four or five years he's played at Georgia Southern. So Southern's lead now 16 and on his foley to attempt to make it 17 again out of Miami Florida and he nails it and it is good and Georgia Southern leads it 41 to 24 we will be back Better. 41 24 Georgia Southern now with a 17 point lead 859 to play Rob Whitten kicks it off again and deep is Tony Logan Logan comes running forward and Fumbles the football and falls at the 12-yard line. They did not need that at this point in the contest. They really didn't because uh, Rob's kick was not that deep. He got under it a little too much, and it was uh, more high than it was long there, Chuck. So Eric Beavers and his offensive unit come back onto the field, now down 17 points. They've done an excellent job of climbing back to within 10 after being down by 24. But then again, Tracy Ham and teaming up with Gerald Harris doing a great job for Georgia Southern's offense this afternoon. 41-24, the Eagles by 17 points. The 41 points, incidentally, in case you're curious, 14 points more than Reno has given up all season long. There's a great pass. Beavers to Calder. That'll be good for 12 yards and out of bounds to stop the clock. And now look at this. They're going without the huddle, but the clock was stopped. Uh, they're going into their their no huddle offense at this point trying to save time and they do call about three or four plays checking that the general that is the case in that case they could have huddled and here beavers hits logan out near the 40. that'll be good for another first down two passes two first downs and suddenly from the 12 yard line all the way out to the 39 yard line there you go as his rollout comes along and uh, again as we mentioned just an excellent excellent rollout passer first and ten Georgia Southern scoring drive, by the way, 26 yards and seven plays, using up two minutes and 50 seconds. Beavers going with the no huddle offense now in an attempt to get this thing done as quickly as possible. And there's great defense. Chris Aiken went high in the air to bat that ball down. It was intended for Terry Logan. I'm sorry, Tony Logan. Logan was there, but uh, Aiken with good defense, good pass defense. Good pressure by Wildman Carter, too. Aiken got there at the same time as the football did and knocked it loose. Well, now the Wolfpack realizes, okay, the clock stopped. We can get back here and talk <laughs> about this. They had that opportunity earlier and uh, with the ball out of bounds, but didn't take it. Did not take it. Now, if you're a defender, this does a couple of things. When you go with a, a no-huddle offense, you know, you don't get much of a chance to regroup or make substitutions or get into situations. And there's the pass to Sales complete. And Sales is out of bounds, again, to stop the clock. But again, a good game. Brad Bowen on the coverage as was Danny Durham. They've had a busy afternoon back there, Chuck, as you watch it again, rolling out to his left as Beavers fires that one out into the flats. And Sales gets it. And sails another couple of yards. Third down and two yards to go. This time they hand it right up the middle, and that is Foger. And Foger gets about eight or nine yards into Georgia Southern Territory, in fact, down to the 44-yard line of the Eagle. Robert Underwood, number 34, making the tackle. Brad Bowen got under him there a little bit. You know, Foger's a load. He's only 5'11", but he's 190 <laughs> pounds and low to the ground. Surrey. Beavers again to the air. Finds Lucius Floyd over on the sideline, but the clock continues to move. Floyd could not get out of bounds. 
We are at eight minutes to play in the contest. Danny Durham again on the stop. Floyd looking up the middle. He could not find a receiver. He goes to his outlet over on the sideline. And Floyd did not do himself uh, much good there. He could have gotten out of bounds, perhaps, to stop the clock. Here's Beavers again. This time he comes to the near sideline and just overthrows his receiver. He was trying to go to Tony Logan again, but uh, overthrew him in an effort to stop the clock. I think perhaps there was a, a mix-up there or whether he wanted him to run a little bit further out. Beavers was kind of looking at him questioningly. Well, I'm sure the Nevada Reno crowd uh, has to be wondering where this all went wrong this afternoon. Either that or they just vastly underestimated Georgia Southern coming in because they, they really thought they had this one in their pocket. I know in talking to people around here, they thought this would be no problem. Here goes Lucius Floyd, and Floyd gets met very rudely by Brad Bowen. Bowen tossed him in the air. It was good for a first down and good yardage. The clock will stop momentarily while the chains move, and going very quickly, here comes Nevada Reno back up to the line of scrimmage. Ford is explosive, isn't he? He just moves right through there. Floyd, that is. Floyd and Foger both. Excellent backs. Beavers drops to pass. He's got a receiver. That is Floyd again. Floyd breaks a tackle, and he's down the sideline. Touchdown. Well, they do it quick. So back comes Nevada Reno. Just like that. How do you like this one? Well, he's breaking the tackle. Here goes Danny Durham sliding off of him there, I believe. Chris Aiken got blocked just enough. Brad Bowen had one final shot at him, but he just, determination just got him in that end zone. So they pulled it within 11 again, and with the extra point by Zendaya can once again narrow the southern margin to 10 points. And you may look for an onside kick, Chuck. And got to get this ball back. There's still time. They've got mm -hmm. seven minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the game. Well, they fake it, they're going to go for two. Looks like he's got and it. And he's got it. A two-point conversion, and now a touchdown and a field goal would win for him. 41 to 32, as suddenly Nevada Reno has narrowed it to the closest they've had it in a while. Nine points. We'll be back. Georgia Southern leading it now by nine points. This is as close as the Wolfpack have been since early in the game. The Southern jumped out to a 17-0 lead before... Nevada Reno got into it. But boy, they've gotten into it in a big way here in the second half, and Zendaya set to kick it off, and Ricky Harris is deep for the Eagles. Harris has it at the one. Looking for some blocking and slips and falls at the 15-yard line. I think he did that intentionally. For some reason, I don't know what the, um, what the problem was there. Well, the crowd certainly gives. I think uh, for a moment we may have been off the air, uh, Chuck. Kind of update folks as to what's going on here. Well, Gerald Harris is, uh, was the case in the last <laughs> drive. Took the ball right up the middle on the one play from scrimmage. And it is now a second down and about two. As he got eight. And here goes Harris again. And not much this time. Maybe a foot and a half for two feet. Dean Hodges, who has played a good game, stepped in there and made the stop. And now limping off comes Dennis Franklin. Dennis has had his problems at, uh, with his, with his uh, ankle. And... We should apologize to you for being momentarily off the air. We had lost power, I am told, here at Mackey Stadium. And uh, Dennis Franklin now being carried off. But we are back now. You did not miss much. You just missed one play. It was an eight-yard run by Gerald Harris. But now we are at third down and still about a yard and a half, two yards. 6.16 to go in the ball game. That uh, drive, by the way, uh, went 87 yards and nine plays in a minute and 39 seconds to close the gap to nine there, Chuck. So they struck in a hurry. The two-point conversion, the big play. Really? And that was Monty Sharp, I should have told you a while ago, who ran it in on the conversion. He was the holder. I'm sorry, not Monty Sharp. That was, uh, I will get that for you. Here comes Ham. Ham outside, and he's got the first down and a little more out near the 29-yard line. So Tracy Ham doing what he does so well, and that is, when it's in doubt, keep it yourself. And he did. He got it out to the 29, and even better was he kept the clock running. Also got that first down. Georgia Southern has got to keep this football for a while. First and 10 now for the Eagles at the 29-yard line. Ham has them up. 
5.45 to play. Gerald Harris does not get a lot of yards. Jeff Davis steps in and stops him. The clothesline special, I believe you call that. That's exactly what you call that. About a foot and a half for the progress there. 41 to 32, Southern leading it by nine points. The clock, though, continuing to move, and it is definitely the ally of the guys in the white and blue for Georgia Southern. I am sure it is not moving as fast as Eric Russell would like to see it right now, but nevertheless, it continues to move. And on second down and nine, Ham keeps the football. He's got running room. He breaks through, and here goes Tracy Ham. He's in the open field. And it's a foot race now. Let's see if they can catch him. And finally, at the 19-yard line, Bernard Ellison runs him down. Again, an incredible fake where it looked like he was going to Gerald Harris in the line, and he just kept it and rolled out to the right. Watch it again, Chuck. There are no words to describe Tracy Ham anymore. You just have to watch and marble. This may be the most exciting athlete I've seen <laughs> on a college football field in many, many years. He Didn't. is... Uh, just when you think that they've got him under control, he does something like that. And suddenly, Georgia Southern now threatening to score again inside the 19-yard line. And if it had not been for Bernard Ellison, Tracy Ham would have had six more points on the board for the Eagles. And even on top of that, he had the presence to stay in bounds, too. So the clock continues to run at 4.30 now left to play. And this time, they give it back to Gerald Harris. And again, they attack right up the middle. Norfleet finally drags him down, but not before Harris gets another five yards down to the 15-yard line. Now the clock definitely a factor. Four minutes and 17 seconds in ticking. Spotted at the four time. Four, 14 will give him uh, six yards on the pickup. Pick Tracy's got to be a little tired after that run, but just a touch. You're up here in this altitude, and I can uh, certainly testify it's, it's tough on you. He is, tough on you. he is in great physical condition though just without a doubt because he takes some shots after after plays are over Chuck. here's Harris another big hole number 75 Charles Cochran opened a huge hole on that right side he's out of Douglasville and Harris just blew through it Caleb and Donathan finally knock him down but not before he's got the first down and at the six yard line of Nevada Reno there it is shot from the end zone and Gerald Harris just bullying his way through Charles Cochran the uh, largest by far of the guys in that Georgia Southern offensive front, 6'1", 266. But now first down and goal to go at the six yard line as the Eagles threaten to put more points on the board and the score right here would just about put it away. Up by nine already and Tracy Ham has them up. They got the big guys in the backfield and they give it to Harris. Harris going behind Larry Boone following the blocking of Boone. He gets it inside the five down around the three yard line. Something unusual. Georgia Southern has got uh, Lonnie Bradley in the ball game as a tight end. We've got dual tight ends. Usually we have somebody split out to the right or something, Chuck. A lot of teams like to go to those two tight ends. You get down in the short yardage situation, and why not get the best blockers you got in the game? Two minutes, 54 seconds. Again to Gerald Harris and down to the one-yard line. Dean Hodges finally making the stop. And the clock continues to move. Georgia Southern now with a third down and about a yard and a half to go for the touchdown. While we've got just a moment, I'd like to thank to Larry Walker, who has done a, a great job for us on, uh, on the production today and helping us with a pickup. And Larry, our thanks to you and a tip of the cap. Third down now and goal to go. And Ham keeps the football. He's got an opening to the right side, and he'll never get it. Touchdown, Tracy Ham. And touchdown, Georgia Southern. That ought to just about do it. Southern now climbs back on top by 15 and will look to make it 16. Tracy Ham, they're just, as you watch it again from the end zone, just rolling out. Nobody can get him. Probably has not gotten the recognition he really deserves, Chuck. Well, he's certainly gotten a lot. <laughs> It's hard to believe that he could deserve much more, but I, I believe you may be right. Foley with the extra point attempt. It is good. It is now 48 to 32, a 16-point lead for Georgia Southern. We will be back at Mackey Stadium. 48, 32, the Eagles.
over on the far side. Aren't they, though? They kick to Logan, and uh, Logan at the six. His knee uh, darn near the ground there, but Logan right up the middle. He's got a big hole. He cuts it to the outside, and let's see if they can catch him. Finally knocked down at the 10-yard line. <laughs> Just when you think a you've seen saving everything. saving tackle by Nay Young. Well, How about the, that? Tony Logan, a great athlete. Now, I thought his knee was close to being down when he when he received the football. Didn't look like it, didn't it? But he apparently not. He found the opening up the middle, cut to the outside, and here Nay Young has to dive and just trips him up. He's still got two or three more yards. We have exactly two minutes left to play. Georgia Southern leading it 48 to 32. We had expected high scoring. We are getting high scoring. In fact, this has been a real shootout here in the second half. If you'll remember the score at, uh, at intermission was just a 14-point game. Here is the pass by Beavers, and it is incomplete. Eric Beavers just shooting it out of the end zone. He was trying to go over there to Brian Calder. Calder was well covered by Chris Aiken. Okay. Let's take another look at this. Now, see, I thought, now watch Logan. See, I thought mm -hmm. his knee, okay, is it down there? It sure looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, now see, in my mind, he should be down right there. Big Sky official standing right there. I didn't see it. So. Nevertheless, though, it's a golden opportunity here for the Wolfpack. 155 to play. They trail it by 16. But you never know what Eric Beavers and company might come up with. Here's a shot into the end zone. Great defense. Good defense. The pass Brad is batted Bullen. down. Brad Bowen. They were trying to get it into Calder, trying to squeeze it in there in between the zone. But Bowen out of Plantation, Florida, diving to knock it down. There you see the scoring drive for Georgia Southern moments ago. Ten plays, 85 yards. And Tracy Ham with the one-yard touchdown run. And this has definitely been his afternoon and his show. And is so often the case, uh, his very broad shoulders you carrying see, this club down the stretch here. You see Brad Bowen with that beautiful defensive play. That saved a touchdown for sure. Third and goal. Man in motion is Logan. He is the guy who had the great return. And here is Beavers rolling out. He throws well when he rolls out. And throws it into the end zone. And touchdown, Brian Calder. A great reception on the backside of the end zone. It really was. And that gets six more points on the board for Nevada Reno. 48-38. They can cut it to a nine-point margin again if they can get the extra point here. And it should be no problem with Zendejas. Watch this pass right into the very back of the end zone. We watch it in slow motion. He just came down with that thing and knew exactly where he was, too, Chuck, to get that foot in bounds. Now, see, at this point, I think you go for two because that wouldn't, if you could get the two, you could narrow the margin to eight. Mm -hmm. If you could get another touchdown, go for two and, and tie, tie it again, then you could get into the overtime situation. And we have to have a winner here today. They would play an overtime, a, uh, well, they play the, the rules where they put the ball. Uh, you, you explain it, Bill. They put the ball out at the, at the 20. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you get into this. Basically, what it is, the ball is put at the 25 as you watch Coach All come back onto the field to kind of discuss things with his team. But they place the ball down at the 25-yard line and uh, flip a coin, I believe, to uh, see which team is going to get the football first. You run a series until somebody scores, and Coach Alt is coming out there to talk about the zonies and to get them to quit throwing stuff onto the field and also give his team a chance to hear the get them quiet so they can hear those signals. But both teams get a shot at it from the 25-yard line to score, Chuck, and I keep we keep doing that till we have a winner. Well, that would be the uh, the situation that would arise should Nevada Reno be fortunate enough to get a two-point conversion here, get the football back, score, and get another two-point conversion. Now, I realize that we're dealing with a long shot there, but then when you're in this situation, if you're a Nevada Reno fan, you're going to have to accept long shot because Absolutely. that's basically what your cho ch chances <laughs> are. It's 143 to play. Otherwise, the season's over. I feel sorry as for those folks who left the stadium early because mm -hmm. uh, this one might yet have a great conclusion. Beavers rolls out and shoots it, and Lucius Floyd had it momentarily and could not hold it. Boy, was he a hit. A very big hit made by Thomas Porter, number 10. Porter really put the stick on Lucius Floyd, and the pass is incomplete. The two-point conversion, no good. He's got this, and Porter just clobbers him from behind. And the Nevada Reno fans, though, applauding, and that is very nice for their, their football team. It, uh, they oh. gave it a good shot there. Isn't that the truth? 1.43 to play, though, and Georgia Southern with a 10-point lead, and you got to feel fairly confident that the Eagles getting the football back can hang on to this now. I'm not sure we won't see an onside kick, though. 
Oh, I, I would bet on that. <laughs> and since we're in uh, Nevada, we could do that. The receivers are on the line for Georgia Southern. You put all the guys up there who are used to handling the football. That's all I see is receivers out there, as a matter of fact, Chuck. I'm surprised Tracy Ham himself had done this. 48-38, Georgia Southern looking to advance to the Diamond Bowl next weekend in Tacoma, Washington, the championship game, the title game. They won it 44-42 over Furman last year. This year they would face Arkansas State, an earlier winner this afternoon over Eastern Kentucky. And Deha set, and here goes the shift. They will definitely go with the onside kick, and let's see what Zendejas does with it. He'll try to bounce it. And he gets a good bounce on it. And it's still bouncing around back there. But Georgia Southern finally falls on it. Delano, Delano Little. Little covers the football at the 47-yard line of the Eagles. So Georgia Southern will get the football back with a minute 42 to kill. Your scoring drive a while ago, for those of you who just happened to glance from the <laughs> monitor momentarily, wasn't but three plays, 10 yards, with an elapsed time of 29 seconds. As Nevada Reno got back on the scoreboard very quickly. Again, I'm not sure they should have ever been down there to begin with. It looked to me like Logan's knee was down on the on the kickoff. It did, didn't it? So first and 10, though, for the Eagles at the 47, and they have but a minute and 42, 100 uh, and two seconds to kill here. And Made a mistake. Walk out of here, go home, and then look for Tacoma next weekend. There's Gerald Harris right up the middle. Harris gets about eight yards down into... Wolfpack territory down at the 46-yard line. By the way, I said those were Big Sky conference officials, and they're not using uh, conference uh, the same conference officials for um, during the playoffs. Chuck, those, these guys are from Gulf Star Conference. My apologies to them. Casting any aspersions on the Big Sky Conference. <laughs> well, one never knows when one goes on the road, <laughs> except that you are in the NCAA playoffs, and they do play by slightly different rules, and there's... Harris again, and he's got the first down, and again, right up the middle. And that has really been the, the tail here this afternoon for the Eagles offense. They have had great success attacking the Wolfpack defense right at the heart, right in the middle of the defense. A minute and five left to play now. They'll move the chains and wind the clock, and the clock continues to run. We are now inside. A minute to play, 59 seconds, and Georgia Southern with a 10-point lead, 48-38. to 38. We expected high scoring. We have gotten high scoring. We expected Tracy Ham to have a great day. We have seen that. We expected Nevada Reno's offense to get going, and it did. Boy, did it ever. I'm sure <laughs> much to the dismay of Irk Russell. And now a timeout taken. The official stopping the clock after an advance of about two yards, and timeout taken by Nevada Reno. 41 seconds left to play. And now, Georgia Southern's attention will turn to Arkansas State. What do you know about them, Bill? Other than the fact that they've got an excellent football team, and I understand they're one of the, could be one of the toughest teams in the country. Of course, we've we faced those guys before. Uh, we haven't seen much from them, but we'll, we'll know in about a week, won't we? In fact, we've got a short week, Chuck. They're going to have to fly back to Statesboro and then uh, come back out here to Tacoma on Wednesday because the game's Friday night. Well, when you win like this, it, it really doesn't matter much to you. You know, it That's makes, true. <laughs> makes those long flights uh, much shorter. Georgia Southern snapping a 19-game home winning streak of Nevada Reno's. Nevada Reno incredible? had an opportunity to do something that no team has ever done before, and that is they had a chance. Could, could they, should they have won here today and then won next week? They could have won more games in a single season than any college football team in modern history. 15 straight. And, of course, breaking their 19-game winning streak here at home. This goes back not to last season, but the season before, before since they've lost a game here. Well, you really got to tip your hat to Irk Russell and his coaching staff for the fine job they've done for preparing this team. And you really wonder what kind of magic it is Irk works because uh, it certainly pays big dividends for him. And now the clock continues to run 37 seconds, 36 seconds. And again, the Wolfpack will kill the clock with 34 seconds left as they delay the obvious now. One of the disc jockeys out here, uh, Chuck, had heard about the Eagle Creek water and called Irk earlier in the week and said he'd make a deal with him, that if, if um, Georgia Southern won, he would drink a glass of that Eagle Creek water if Irk Russell would reciprocate and drink a glass of Reno tap water. Well, I had some of the Reno tap water last <laughs> night. I, I'm not sure that Irk would have had the better of that. <laughs> I know. That was, uh, that was tough. <laughs> We got uh, we got some nasty looks from our, our Nevada Reno spotter. 
Uh, Jim Ratcliffe, who's been spotting Georgia Southern for me, has been doing a great job. And uh, I, I got to tell you that the, the entire crew here has been great this afternoon. Oh. Rollins Stallworth, who uh, has spotted Nevada Reno. Rollins, a former uh, Wolfpack football player, and uh, he's had to cringe a couple of times at a few of the th <laughs> a few of the things we've said about his Wolfpack here this afternoon. Rollins, we appreciate your help. You've done a great job for us, and thank you. Thanks, Rollins. And our thanks to the NC2A, too, for this All the event. athletic directors and sports information directors who have made our job right. a lot easier. Chuck. Mark McClellan, Paul Stewart, Nevada Reno. And with 30 seconds left, and Georgia Southern still moving the football, as they have all afternoon. And we are inside 25 seconds, which means that they don't have to take another snap. Nevada Reno out of timeouts. They can no longer kill the clock. And that should do it. That is going to be it. Thanks, everybody, you for see, joining us. You see the Eagles there <laughs> walking off. Very happy group. And Irk Russell, I tell you what, if you don't like college football, you got to love this man. He is a great, great credit to uh, college football, and Georgia Southern's got to love it. 48 to 38, the Eagles advance to the title game next week in Tacoma. We'll be back to wrap it up after this. Gulfstream Business Jets. Today, over 400 of these amazing airplanes are at work with the world's major corporations and governments. Chosen for their superior combination of range and speed, cabin size and comfort, engine reliability, systems dependability, the new Gulfstream 4 will take the same superiority into the 1990s and beyond because we're making sure the ultimate in business aircraft will always be a Gulfstream. Gulfstream Aerospace, a great place to work in Savannah. Just ask anyone who works there. to 38 indeed the georgia southern eagles will play one more time and that will be next friday night in tacoma washington against arkansas state for the one double a division title and a chance to repeat let's go down to the winning coach and dave williams dave Okay, we are having an audio problem on the field, for which we apologize, but there you saw a very happy Eric Russell. It is no uh, surprise to me that we're having trouble down there with uh, audio lines, the crowd all over the place, but very happy Georgia Southern fans, and I think you can see a very happy Eric Russell there, very relieved Eric Russell there as his team has prevailed here today by 10 points, 48 to 38, but Bill, it has indeed been a great football game to watch. It really has, Chuck, and you know, they, they said that last year maybe it was a fluke that Georgia Southern got this, but... You can't call this a fluke. Bill, thank you so much for having me, uh, allowing me to be with you. Folks, hope you enjoyed it back in Georgia, the final 48-38 from Mackey Stadium in Reno, Nevada. So long, everybody, and thanks for being with us. This NCAA football game has been brought to you by Gulfstream Aerospace, makers of Gulfstream Aircraft, the ultimate in business travel, and by Atlanta Gaslight Company, and by CNS Bank, Citizens and Southern National Bank in Georgia. This has been a special sports presentation of WJCL TV in cooperation with the Athletic Department of Georgia Southern College and the University of Nevada at Reno. It has come to you live from Mackey Stadium in Reno, Nevada.